Welcome to part five of Pulling the Trigger, our very special-ish podcast where me, Stefan, and Mexi go through all of Studio Trigger's backlog as we offer our, well, I, as I offer my first impressions normally, and Mexi offers up his opinions, and we, we do a lot of in-depth, sometimes, sometimes more than usual, uh, over-analysis of these anime series. Of, of most, mostly good, but sometimes, as we're going to see here, varying degrees of quality. Whoa, yeah, no, this is going to be a doozy of an episode, just because, just on uh, format alone, because before this, all the episodes, all the shows we had watched previously, you hadn't seen them, so we were getting kind of your your blind opinion on that, versus Darling in the Franks, if I'm not mistaken, this was your first Trigger show, wasn't it? Yep. That that is uh. correct. There there is there there needs to be some explanation, which I think. Well, yeah. First, so first off, again, just like the past two episodes, I have no idea if this is going to be two episodes or one. Uh, probably going to be two episodes. But as of right now, we're just going to focus on the first thing, which is yep, the the kind of the most controversial of all Trigger series, Darling in the Franks. And to start off by explaining how this became my. Uh, my my first trigger series we I, we need to kind of go back and just kind of like explain where i was where i was at that time period because yeah, where were you please tell us I'm kind of like what would you <laughs> it's, it's like an interrogation where were you when the series started so i i, I would probably kind of say i am a like I'm, a, I'm still kind of a newbie anime fan it honestly wasn't until 2018 that i seriously was like be like okay I am an anime fan and I want to go out of my way to seek out anime to watch because it was like, it was 2016 and 2017 where I watched like Girl Who Leapt Through Time and Your Name and A Silent Voice and then discovered like Dragon Maid and then the one-two punch of uh, Persona 5 and My Hero Academia and it was just all of this kind of like peak anime, just discovering it for the first time made me be like, wow, anime is g- good. So it just bumbled it's by. It's beautiful, <laughs> so beautiful, dangerous and scary, and then beautiful. Yeah. So once 2018 started, I was like, okay, I want to start actually following anime as they come out. So uh, the first, like, I followed like Crunchyroll and Funimation on Twitter because they post like uh, like the clips of like whatever series are being uploaded. Stuff. And I, I usually find that to be like the perfect way for me to like to get into series because I'm like, oh, I just see, I see like a two minute clip that they post and I'd be like, oh, that looks interesting. I might go check it out. So it's like, I've, that, that does really much help me. And the, the most popular series at that time, like winter 2018 was Darling in the Franks. Like that oh, series was yeah. everywhere. And so I was like, okay, I should probably go check this out. And yeah, I want, and you, you, you might, you might not, you might have forgotten after how many years, but yeah, Darling in the Franks was like, yeah, it was the most popular anime of that season. And yeah, people really loved it. Like it, it exploded in popularity. I remember, uh, there, I went, uh, a local convention near me, like as it was being aired and like so many people were dressed up as like zero two and Ichigo and all that stuff. And it was like, yeah, it was, it was like big. So I, that was why like, I wanted to follow it. And it was, and honestly it was very, I was like, yep, yeah, this is very good. I'm very much enjoying this. I was like, I was hyped. I was like, it, it gave me the feels a lot of the time. So I was like really excited. And then it got to a certain point where everybody started dropping off of it. And then it got to, and then it concluded and everyone was like, uh, Oh. And then it was like the crusty scene. What the hell was that? <laughs> yeah, so Dar- then it, we're going to get a lot into it, but Darling of the Franks then became kind of a joke of the series started off so good and kind of just downward spiled into nothingness. And so it was like, it's been years since I had seen it, but I I remembered the bad, but I also remembered that I was like, I, I still remembered a lot of good about the series. So that's why I was like, I'm really curious to kind of go back to it and see did like does that good still hold up or does the ending and the bad stuff ruin it and just just to start off with consensus is i think i kind of liked it like the, there are oh. some things that very much bug me about it but honestly as a whole the good i think is genuinely great and some of honestly some of all of trigger's high points 
It's just that it's it, it like you're like 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 you told me, Maxi. It's just kind of infuriating because the stuff that bug me really bugs me, and it didn't have to be this way. But it's like. But like the the good is like the good is there, and I like I want to appreciate the good, and I feel I feel like Frank's kind of gets too much of a bad rap, but it's also like a lot of things are like yeah, I want, you want to give it some shit for doing some of the things that it tried to do. Oh no, I totally agree. Like if I could describe Darling and the Franks in one word, it would be frustrating. If I am allowed to use a few more words, I usually describe Darling the Franks as the anime about the sex and the robot kids that gets ruined by the heterosexual agenda. Which, uh, yeah, is uh, not just me throwing shade in and just being petty about it, but like is politically exactly what the fuck happens with this show. But no, like I totally remember I, I had forgotten it until, you know, going back and looking at uh, stuff for our discussion here was, yeah, Darling in the Franks was hyped as shit. Well, because for one, it was around the time like Trigger was at its peak, like the, the previous se- uh, series before this was hell. They had done Little Witch and people were all on board with it. Um and then the, the combination with A1 and A1's history with their um, mecha and their robot anime. Because that's the other thing, too, is that aside from the fact that, you know, Trigger is always doing references to themselves and the fact that they had done animations with uh, mechas and robots in them, Darling and the Franks was Trigger's first official, like, mecha anime. Like, these were the previous Evangelion guys, the previous Gurren Logging guys, people who had worked on, like, the mecha anime that had shaped the current like mecha landscape going back and working together with a1 like just in terms of like the pre-production lineup like this show had hype this show had expectation this show had discussion and then like it came out and then like you said week by week for like the first half of the show this show was on like sky high like zero two instantly became like waifu of the decade for i don't know reasons i some of y'all are gonna have to explain this to me we'll talk about it and we'll get to that but is zero two the bestest waifu eh, nah. i get right okay i'm glad we're all at least we're on the same level like she cool she she a gal pal but i don't see her being like greatest soul bonding like partner that you should like i don't know I also, we'll I, 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 gave, uh, I got a better appreciation of Zero Two on this rewatch, but not in a, like, oh my god, she best wife food, love sucky no. sucky and all that, but more of like, oh, she's a she's a very cool, interesting character, and I'm like, I appreciate, like, what, appreciate, like, where she goes and, like, what she does in it, but yeah, no, I, she isn't, I, I'm just gonna say, she isn't my type. I mean, she, 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 lo- she looks, she, she looks good, she, she, she's nice, and it's, but it, I mean, she isn't nice, but it's like... <laughs> She's very not nice. I mean, a lot of her relationship to other people around is uh, on the predatory side. She can't help it. She was born that way, but, you know, that that's kind of the whole concept on this show, too. Because, like, you know, aside from my very cynical, like, critique on the show there, the show itself is is trying to, and even with how it ends up, is trying to be this show about relationships, about connecting about i mean like i i get that in an end that like towards the ends of this means of you know procreation is is this high pinnacle of humanity the show eventually becomes this thing of like discussing fertility and discussing how our species continues on both biologically and then like also socially like together is how we like go into the future is sort of what the show is trying to say but and here's where my issue is. Like, yes, the ending to Darling the Franks is controversial. Like, just when I was looking up videos, um, you know, just to, to see everyone's general vibe, everyone's general opinion, even though, you know, the internet gave that plenty when the show first came out. I wanted to get, like, see if anyone had any recent opinions on it. And it, the ending is still the most disgusting thing about this series. Like, the, the fact that everyone was so hyped and the show seemed to be so, so strong. Like, I know we've talked about, like, pretty strong shows, like on the pod here like we've talked about how good a lot of shows build this up darling knocks all of that aside like he's niver's whole like relationship build up no that goes aside little witch academia's like character development build up no like 
Darling was hitting every like trigger point, like you said, like all the stuff that they're good at, they were thriving. And then came the part where like the show had to stick the landing. And I have seen some rumors, not rumors, but like even like postings on the internet. So, you know, take that with like the ultimate grain of salt that like, you know, there were discussions that, you know, possibly trigger focused more on the first half of the show versus a one focus being on the second half. But I don't see it being that clear cut. I mean, that's way too, it feels more like a scapegoat. Like you really want to like make one person have all the responsibility versus like, you know, it's probably better to just have it. It was a collaborative effort that just didn't land all together. That once you get the ending, once you get to where Trigger was or where uh, Darling the Franks kind of builds to and the message that it kind of lays out for you, it's one not well cohesive like i understand on like a just a pure story writing aspect that like oh hey this point a went to point b went to point g that doesn't feel good like yeah no that doesn't feel good in general but darling and the franks is super weird because it has this show it's the show that starts off at with a very strong like interconnecting message and then throws it all away to make the show about how is it have being heterosexual and having babies the coolest fucking thing ever? And I'm just sitting there with my jaw dropped on the floor because I'm like, Trigger, this is not you. This is not the Trigger I know. And I just wonder why? Why did Darling and the Frames have to be this show where that becomes the message? Where, you know, making babies is apparently like a, a cosmic, like, force for good in the universe and like in the, in the way that like anime is prone to like have certain emotions be like universe shattering for some reason darling the franks chooses procreating as it's like cosmic force and I, again i it's something that i not something I've, i i liked i did not enjoy that darling took that turn yeah, to, to go back to something that you mentioned is the fact that, yeah, the, it is one of the things where you have a lot, like, there, you have a lot of people online kind of being like, oh, Frank's isn't technically a Trigger series because, yeah, it, it, it is, it is not, it's not just a co-production between A1, but it's also, but well, it's, Anap- it's, it, it's Anaplex, and Anaplex is A1 Pictures, as well as their newly developed uh, subsidiary that happened while Frank's was being made, which is Cloverworks. And Cloverworks was pretty oh, much, true. yeah, Cloverworks, it was a, like, yeah, it was literally a division of A1 that split off while Franks was being in production. And they're like, okay, these guys are the ones that are, like, doing, like, if you look on, like, the, the credits, it's, like, the way it's credited is that A1 was the main people behind the production of the series. A1 and Trigger worked on, like, developed the series together, like, writing and creating the characters and outlining everything. And then Cloverworks were the ones who handled the animation. Like, they were the ones who, like, yeah, basically, they took all the assets and put it together. Made the pictures move. With the exception of a couple, it's like, you can look at it on Wikipedia, where there's, like, I think five or six episodes that are specifically credited as Trigger animating them, and then there's one episode that A1 Pictures is specifically credited as animating, but the rest of them are all Cloverworks. So it is kind of a weird thing of, like, of like ten, yeah, you have these three, technically two different studios, because A1 and Clover are kind of like a... They are like part of one arm. Just they're they're two arms of one body of the the body that is. <laughs> Not Anaplex. all turtles are tortoises, but all tortoises are turtles. It's one of those things. And Cloverworks is it, it's it's a weird like monogamy because it's like that they've done some genuinely like great stuff. It's like you've got. Rascal does not dream of Bunny Girl Senpai, The Promised oh. Neverland, uh, Hori Mia recently, and it's like genuinely like like well put together series that look visually great. But then you also kind of have stuff like, like at the same time as Darling and the Franks, Cloverworks was also doing Persona Five the animation, yeah. and then at the same time as Hori Mia, they did Promised Neverland season two. Uh oh. And. And they at this they they also did Wonder Egg Priority, which I haven't seen yet, but I heard that one was like praised pretty well okay. Okay. until they Just released complete, the ending. Complete sidebar, but so appropriate in our Darling and the Franks discussion. Wonder Egg Priority also has the same issue where like they start with a great, fantastic idea. They have fantastic foreshadowing, like laying around. And you're like, oh my god, what is this 
like you kind of get what they're talking about and like you get excited about what topics they're touching on and what they're discussing and how they're discussing it and then all of a sudden the show becomes an anime and then there's like cyborg twins and ghosts and shit like that like darling's kind of is in that very same like vein of media where it's like but the ending though um wonder it goes way harder on this uh but i just wanted to be like since you want since you brought it up is like no no we have to discuss that like frank's isn't some weird like this happened one time in the history of anime like this is something that happens a lot um it's just it normally doesn't happen to a studio who usually has pretty meh representation on like lgbtq and then to make a whole show where it's like yeah but fuck those guys because they can't make babies yeah, and, and there is kind of the thing, especially because, like, if you look at, like, whenever Trigger, I mean, because it, it's been Trigger's 10th anniversary this year, so they've been putting out a lot of different things, and you notice that Franks has kind of been, like, not mentioned a lot of the time. Like, <laughs> occas- occasionally you might see, like, Zero Two, like, drawn she's alongside discussed. them. The, the, she might as well be, like, the Daikon chick, where it's like, oh, no, she's just a Trigger character. She's not in, actually, a show. And it's like, oh, they're actually... No, Zero Two is actually from a whole last show. We just don't talk about it. Like, I didn't watch the whole thing because I knew, like, there I didn't want to, like, be spoiled for, like, Promare and BNA and, like, footage from that. But from what I saw of, like, the, like, Trigger's, like, their big 10th anniversary, like, trailer thing that they put on YouTube, I, I saw a clip. There was at least one clip from when Supernatural Battles, like, that was in there, but I didn't see any clip from Frank's. So, like, maybe I missed it, but I'm, like... Uh, and, they, and and it's a thing of like yeah people are like oh yeah trigger disowned it and it's like it's all a one picture's fault and i'm like i uh. like I, I i did initially like cuz i was like oh that like, i i did like after not watching it for so long, I did, like, kind of, like, believe that because I was like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. Trigger is this perfect, like, this perfect, like, company that can do no wrong. And A1 is, oh, the Sword Art Online people. Oh, they are no good. Oh, no siree. But then it's like, <laughs> but then I watched it. And I'm like, no, every problem that I have with this is something that's derived from a previous Trigger. So, like, my biggest, like, that we'll get into, my biggest problem with the series is something that Trigger has had, is a problem I've had with every single Trigger series before, like, and potentially after this. So I'm like, yeah, I don't think this is a, this isn't as simple as, oh, A1 screwed over Trigger's project, or Trigger was called in the fix A1's project. I think this is just genuinely a project that fell out of their hands, and they, they, like, they all, like, they, they, they had something good, and then just kind of fumbled at the end. It wasn't, it wasn't a conspiracy, it wasn't a, there was only one talent involved, it was just a, a poopsie whoopsie. Hey, as, as it were... And then occasionally what happens is it just gives you this weird, controversial anime. Like, I'm not even going to say bad. I'm going to avoid, like, referring to this as, like, a bad anime or... or Because, like, on a technical level, this show is completely competent. The show hits all the marks. It exceeds several marks in some of the scenes. On an animation level, on a technical level, like, there, there's not, like, a musical hit that isn't, like, hit in this series but it's just when we get to and it's not even like on the story either it's where the story goes it's what the idea is that it starts and builds and then what it builds to ends up being something that's just so off-putting that to me at least it it just leaves the show feeling so frustrated because we're gonna when we discuss it um a lot of the topics and a lot of the ways that things are discussed in darling and the franks i think are just downright brilliant like, they are some of the things that, like, I feel could have changed anime, could have, like, really look at, like, what what some of the themes and tropes that we see in anime, what they really mean, and how they can be used in, in anime, in the story. And, like, Darling in the Franks starts off 15 solid episodes of just excelling, of just doing the best that they possibly can, and it's so good. And then they just try to explain everything, and then it all falls apart, and some stuff that was built up just gets dropped, stuff just appears and is like the new important shit, and it all ends with a happy ending for most of our cast. Most of our cast. Yeah, so so, quickly, since we usually always just do like a 
general series uh, plot overview wrap uh, startup. Uh, yeah, it, it takes place in the future. It's a it's post apocalyptic future. Uh, there are these giant like dinosaur monster creatures called Klaxosaurs that just kind of rampage throughout uh, throughout Earth while humanity is kind of. Uh, secluded itself in these little like pods as they're basically drilling energy from the the earth to survive. And so, in order to fight off these claxosaurs, they've essentially bred they've artificially bred uh, a, a group of children in order to pilot these robots called Franks. Because you need in order to pilot them, you need uh, a male and a female um, in order to get it to work. And they basically train them to. Pilot the suit, pilot the armor, and fight off the claxosaurs. And the main the the main focus of what they're called the parasites. Uh, their main guy is Hero, uh, gen- our, our our generic uh, amnesiac uh, MC, our protag. Not the first and not the last from Trigger. Well, this one's different. He doesn't have amnesia. What he has is performance issues. Which well, no, no, no. He he does have amnesia. Remember. Oh, he does. Actually, he does. a lot of... No, because this show has straight up Final Fantasy VIII amnesia, where it's not even like, oh, it's an amnesia. It's an amnesia that they don't even know. They don't even know they've forgotten shit. But you're right. Continue. Yeah, so the whole thing is that... So he, he, he he's part of like the group called the Parasites, and he, he's the only one who's unable to pilot a Franks for whatever reason. And so he basically... He's depressed about it. He just He wants to fight alongside his friends, but he can't. But then one day he meets a a, Klaxico, a Klaxosaur human hybrid just known as Zero Two, who he fi- who after some after some shenanigans finds out that he is able to pilot with her. So he finds himself physically and emotionally attracted to Zero Two because of his desire to pilot the Franks. So now it becomes this thing of they be, they become partners so that they can pilot their Franks, even though it's this whole thing of, oh, the more he pilots with her, the more dangerous it is because since she's she part Plaxasaur, you can't really, you, 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 she's, she's basically unable to pilot anyone for a significant amount of time or else they die. So right. it becomes this. So it becomes this whole thing of like, how long is he able to pilot with her before he basically gives up? And what is it exactly that, that Zero Two wants? And what is their connection basically building towards? And then this is yeah. also like intertwined with their relationship with the rest of the parasites. How you have you have the 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 the, the uh, technically childhood friend who's also in love with the the main character and is trying her best to get him to notice her. You have the best friend who. Who is hopelessly in love with the childhood friend and desperately trying to get to notice. Then you got you got the you have the two bickering uh, you have the two constantly bickering uh, kids. You got like the one the one very aloof one. You got the fat guy. You got the the, the a- you got the asshole, and then you got the the sweet girl. And it's just it, it is what what do all the what do all these generic anime just like just like in Keys Niver, What do all these gene- generic anime uh, stereotypes? Put them together and let's see what happens. Put it in a blender. But no, I just to just to kind of go back onto your whole setup there. So like yeah, so you have this post-apocalyptic world. Humanity is put onto the giant movable ship. So and they're called plantations, which uh, that's one thing that is kind of nice about Darling the Franks is very kind of triggery. Like I can't believe we're doing a callback to this, but very much in line with the uh, um, supernatural battles. In the sense that it, they're using those outside languages to kind of have those double meanings that come across a little weird when you watch it in English. Um, the fact that they use the term parasite on the children, very direct, very to show that they're not seen. Ch- it, the word the term children even in the show is kind of kind of double meaning because, um, you know, children are engineered in this futuristic society. Their sole purpose is to pilot the Frank's robot because you, like you said, you have to have the male female bond, but we later find out that another component to piloting is, uh, reproductive functions. Again, I don't want to be like, well, I, I, I know it's a part, a point that I'm going to be harping a lot, but when the show makes it again, has it become that, you know, reality changing force in the way that you know Gurren Logan has that spiral energy which is just pure blind you know self-assurance or kill a kill which was that that individual love force for some reason Darling and the Franks when they were figuring their shit out I guess must have spun a prize wheel and was like what is going to be the magical force 
And for some weird reason, making babies was the force of the universe that they landed on to make their robot anime about. Which is fine. Which is cool. Because I know a lot of people initially when the show was coming out, one of the big issues people were having was with the with the way that the parasites pilot the franks in the sense that you know they essentially pilot the the the, the robots doggy style <laughs> like it, like it's not full it's not quite you know like pacific rim where you know they're synchronized to matching movements which is kind of another a direction i think they could have maybe gone with with what darlings is trying to do here because here's the thing about about robot animes and it's kind of the thing too with darling uh, with robot animes is that piloting the robot never just means piloting the robot like i know we have the whole evangelion meme where you know get in the robot shinji why are you crying and not getting in the robot but the thing is is that i know we're getting this is feeling kind of like high school lit analysis like what do the green eyes mean but like getting into a robot in an anime means something it's usually the main character having to physically confront either ideas or physically confront people confront forces hell the original mobile suit gundam amaru only gets in the robot because there is a full-on war on his hometown like he doesn't even know how to pilot the robot he just gets in it because he has no choice and then it becomes an idea of like he 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 learns uh that that war is between people like he has a whole thing where like oh i can't shoot another gundam there's a person in there so you know piloting the robot in that show means something when you get to evangelion shinji has to confront you know his reality he has to confront the tough things he has to confront the relationships he has with his family by getting in the robot getting in the robot means something it caught it's for something to occur darling the franks i felt was doing such a brilliant thing where they were using the piloting the robot as a means of connection while also throwing in you know the connectivity of you know sex with people you know having a boy and a girl pilot the robot and having it be a moment having it be this you know you know it's like a metaphor it's to show that they not only have they stepped their game up in piloting the robot they stepped their game up but of connecting and communicating with one another so to me when a lot of people were having this weird like you know it, it, i and i understand you know you kind of get this jerk reaction to where it's like oh they are doggy styling to pilot the robot but when you think about it that opens the avenue for piloting the robot to mean a lot of things now especially when in the post-apocalyptic world where all of humanity is trapped in the you know in the plantations all of humanity is also following a singular government slash religion slash evil organization, which I know I've already said Ava enough times in this, and there's going to be more. Like, I'm not saying it as more of a ripoff, but just more that, you know, these are points and steps in, like, the mecha anime history. And so I, I usually refer back to it just because, you know, when it's the biggest mecha anime of all fucking times, it's kind of the easiest thing to draw back from for for your points there but you know you have the evil society ape that is led by an individual known as papa and it again it's it's where i kind of my hopes were so high they were so up there and the hype was so good at the beginning uh just because you know you have those intro scenes where all the parasites are getting literally married into their male female bonds with wedding rings mind you by papa that they pray to so whether or not you were looking for like to deeply put darling in a religious context they did i don't know if it's like maybe something that just happened because they just went with all of these words maybe in english and didn't realize that they had basically picked like a giant religious metaphor for themselves but you know like you have all these moments where the show sets itself up where there is an authority a religious authority that is telling these parasites, these children, that their only purpose, because that's the other thing too, these children don't just exist in like, oh, hey, they were chosen to pilot the robot. They were bred. Like they were grown in a test tube for no other reason other than to pilot the Franks. It's kind of where uh, Hero's initial tension comes from is his performance anxiety isn't just that, oh no, I can't pilot the robot now. It's that if I can't pilot the robot, I get thrown away. The kids never kind of really, like, hit on that. It's very Keys and Ivory, where, like, Trigger has made this dark situation without realizing, like, just how 
dark it is. Like they're kind of they look at it from some of the like ooh creepy aspects, like ooh testing on children, harvested children, but it never goes like full blown like you know these are. It, it, it touches it, but like the children aren't really explicitly shown just how disposable they are until they meet like other parasites. Um, and so again, you have this situation where their whole their whole purpose, as told to them by this paternal religious figure is to pilot the robots in these male female bond pairs like it sets up this whole situation of like this sci-fi parallel between you know our current society in a, a patriarchal heteronormative society where like you are told that a part of your identity is literally which of two pieces for procreation are you and so when darling was setting up these ideas and was like creating these plot points in the first couple episodes like i was hyped because i was ready for like a trigger like ceiling smash where this was going to become you know this greater discussion on like do we listen to the authorities on like especially on things like as are the purpose of our lives like we shouldn't do that alone let alone for like you know the societal pressures and so i thought that's where trigger was gonna go it, it felt very triggery almost like little witch academia and kill a killer all about love thyself like don't let the outer opinions dictate who you think you are and darling was getting that set up like it was straight up just saying like here is your purpose and i was ready for it to be a moment where they were going to rebel against that and then they all just kind of fall in line with it in a different context, but they really just end up playing into the messaging of, of Ape. But Darling the Franks felt to me, it felt to me like it was building up towards basically an Evangelion AU where Shinji finally, finally has enough of this shit and beats the shit out of his dad. Like, it feels like the, the, that would, that was basically what Franks was building up for. Like, cause you have like, I, I think like what, like how it hand, like how it's handled for pretty much. Mo pretty much all of the series i think is handled like pretty well because the whole thing is that oh like they don't they don't question papa they don't question ape because they're like oh we we fall like we follow them as d like there's the whole thing of like so many of them are like oh like we, we we're always listening we're always listening to what papa says if papa says something to us like, they pray to him before every meal yeah exactly and yeah and it's and it's a whole thing of like yeah so they're always basically just like yeah question not questioning it at all and then slowly over the course like they, they do a good job of slowly over the course uh, of it being all like oh like they start question like they start being given more information be like oh should we question it and be like oh uh, i don't know and it's like they, they they do it's not just simply a oh they suddenly change their mind it's there's a there's a gradual build up to get to the point of like i think it's like episode the the epi like uh like the, uh, the during the second half when basically but when they when they're taken in well, when they're taken in and like uh and and the two are are like brainwashed and like at, at that point they're like okay no fuck these guys it's like and then by that point like there's pretty much the whole thing of they're like okay we'll help you with this one thing because we know these guys like the clacks sort of trouble but they're also basically like yeah after that we don't want anything to do with you and, and like at, at that point i'm like oh it's very clear that we're gonna lead into they're gonna defeat the claxosaurs and then they're gonna go take take the fight to ape and it's like it's gonna be Someone, the kids somewhere somewhere it's going to be the kids rebelling against yeah the, the 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 oppressive adults and it's going to be this story and it's like yes it's like i thought everything that they were doing with that is perfect but then it was like almost it, it's it's such well, a big thing up, yeah it's up. such a big thing i can't talk about it right now but it's like then they're like but we can't really do that so we're going to do this no. other thing and then it's like uh like that that was the one thing and it's like yeah but it, for pretty much most like for most of the series i think they did what yeah everything with this yeah with this totalitarian dictator cult uh controlling these kids and especially because like the kids are a special situation because they have this whole experiment of of how, how about we put like uh let's put these kids in a like a because normally it's like oh the kids are just only in the military uh like environment of like the, the these why like they have like all the different squadrons like these ones are only like designed for just the fighting and that's it but now they're like how about we try making these kids act like kids let's see how does that how does that change their performance all oh, oh, right right because because our main characters are an experimental squad totally forgot about that that all the other parasites yeah they're just cookie cutter like i, I will get to it because i want to also like talk about this cast because it goes very keys and ivory but um all of the parasites are referred to as a code name like they are not they're not people these are not adult human children like these are clone babies grown with a number 
to just get thrown into a robot. And then, yeah, and and, and and it's Hero who's the one who's like, hey, how about we give each other nicknames? And then he gives everybody nicknames. They're like, oh, that's cool. And like that that's how, because the whole thing is like, that Hero is kind of the individual. He, he's the dreamer of the bunch who's just like, even like as a young, even as like a young, as a young baby, he, he was just like, oh, like I want to see like life outside of... Uh, of like being a parasite and it's just like he desires of like it's it's that innate desire of like oh like after we're done fighting the clack stores maybe we can have a life to like and that and that that's the whole thing with like all those parasites they're like oh yeah since they're in a like a new situation where they get to basically quote-unquote live as regular people they have this feeling of oh once we do our jobs maybe then we can be like people too even though it's like it's basically just one giant like false hope and it's like a it, big it, lie it, yeah and, and it, it, it's one of the like the best like most interesting things because you're like because you feel bad for it because you're like you're just waiting for them to find the moment when they're finally realize that no that's not gonna happen and you want them to fight back against that Especially because, like, yeah, because you mentioned Kiesniver, and this is, like, a better version of that setup in Kiesniver, because, like, like we talked about in that is the whole, the whole setup is these, ran- these like, random kids are brought to are basically forced together to become friends, and it's, like, all these people of various different personalities, and, like, you mentioned it's kind of, like, a meta take on, like, anime itself of, like, putting these uh, disparate personalities together and forcing them to be together, so you kind of have that, but with, but, but, but in that one, it kind of had the issue of, the, the these are like high schoolers who kind of like are acting very weirdly like even within the situation they have and it's like even though there are parts of it that I like about their relationship it's also there's some kind of like annoying aspects about their uh relationship and development as characters but with Frank mm-hmm. Frank's pretty much doesn't have any of those issues because the whole idea is these are kid these are these are kids that are they were literally born from a test tube so they they, they don't they don't know anything so when you have these people like they they're more siblings than anything else like it kind of it, it's a little on, on the borderline of it all but just just cuz the relationship with the parasites it's very close knit and i mean like no i think the closest you can maybe even get to like a sort of familiar relationship is maybe hero and ichigo having kind of i know it's meant to lean way harder into the whole childhood friend but you do get like bibs and bobs of sibling um i mean especially since again they're all born and raised from the same location um Kind of, kind of to go back to the beginning uh, of the series as well. The the beginning is deep. The, the the beginning of the series is is so dense. And I remember that everyone on the internet was trying to like figure out what was the messages, what were the red flags. Which ha, none of you got it right. Like no one could have get. I, I remember everyone trying to tell based off the intro who was gonna make it to the end of the series, and then it just then darlings decided it's like we're not that kind of show, guys. And then it wasn't that kind of show. But um. But kind of tying into, just because I want to make sure that this pin is placed when we, by the time we get to the end uh, of the series, but uh, with Hero's whole, like, not being able to pilot the robot, um, he has an assigned partner who, unfortunately, because they're unable to pilot the robot, they just get rid of her. They shoot her off the, the colony. And for literally the entire series, I was under the presumption that that character was dead. I thought that that entire scene was meant to like you know convey the message was meant to show the immediately within the series the dissonance that the parasites have on their reality and like what's actually going on like the whole idea that the parasites think that by serving their function of piling the franks that they're going to you know become adults they're going to get what they what they desire or they're going to maybe not have to pilot the franks as opposed to you know the fact that no you were literally just created to pilot the robot and the second you can't pilot the robot we're just going to launch you into the desert because we don't like you're no more trouble than you're worth um so you had that moment where i thought the show was kind of like show the stakes that these kids aren't even aware of like yes they understand that they have to beat the robots they have to save the humans and there's a lot of play on that too where you know there's questions of who is the human who are the humans what does it mean to be because you know it, it's a media created by humans there's always going to be the question of what does it mean to be human but it, and in this case darlings tries to really look at that kind of biologically they kind of look at this dystopic what if dead end for human evolution where we're having to create peoples but not real peoples peoples that we can like put into our robots and have them pilot um 
which let's talk about the robots let's talk about them franks okay one they're probably my favorite thing in this whole show like i know like i've been just kind of on a, a rampage of grouchiness so far but no 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 robot girls giant robot girls is a brilliant idea especially if you're trigger because that means you can simultaneously have you know robot transformation power up scenes and magical girl transformations like it can be literally the same scene because why you made your giant robots cool girls uh and then you name them all after flowers which is also cool i mean i know like well before kingdom hearts made sure we all knew streletzia was the name of a flower darling the franks was making sure we all knew that streletzia is a type of flower it's kind of funny because it's like the the, the all the, like the uh, i mean the the action like the, the action was pretty cool but it was like every time it got to like the action of like the franks fighting the claxosaurus i was always like eh, it's okay like really? I, I was so because those I are was my so favorite in, moments because <laughs> i was so invested in like the care like every time like like the character drama that was going on like during the fight like that like like whenever like when it's like oh like the two characters are like like and when like two characters are like all right they're 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 like they're they're frozen in place in the robot and everybody has to try and protect them while they're dealing with their drama inside or it's like the all of, like all of the all of the character like all yeah pretty much all of like yeah the, the relationship stuff going on like at the house it's like that is like the high like the high heights of the series for me because i feel like that is like frank's kind of secret like strength is that the whole idea is let, let, let let's let's take kind of like your standard high school like romance drama but have all the characters basically people who have never felt these emotions ever before and have, have them basically, to learn them you have <laughs> to learn them like have to learn them as a, like, yeah you like you have like you have Ichigo, who is the the childhood friend who very clearly has that crush on Hero, but she and she's jealous of Hero being attracted to Zero too. But you have but the thing is like she's never felt jealousy before. So once she starts feeling jealousy, it's this feeling of what the hell is like wrong with my heart? Like why is this doing? Like they can understand, like they can feel like love and hate and jealousy and all that, but they don't know what it means. So like like one of my favorite scenes is like the scene when like Ichigo, I think I believe it's like she 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 talked with Zero, she talked with zero two and zero two kind of like tells her off so she's just kind of sitting there kind of like being sad like outside and then uh goro shows up and he's like about to try and put her put his hand on her shoulder but his hand starts shaking and he like he looks at his own hand and he starts crying up and he's like why like do you see in the face of like and then he warms up like oh shit i feel emotions too and i i love that no i love that scene too because it's almost like emotions is like this virus bug like, it's a glitch in one that just starts to spread to all the others. And it's like, yeah, yeah, that's what having emotions be like sometimes. Yeah, and so then you have, like, an ep- you have like the Odd Couple episode when it's, like, they decide, oh, how about we, like, actually act like boys and girls and, like, split the entire house in half and, like, kind of, like, <laughs> so force good. argue with but Those each- are some of the best scenes because yeah. those are really where, you know, where Key Sniper was having some of its issues being a 12-episode anime was we never got we, – we got some hangouty time, but we didn't even get, like, a whole episode of just non-confrontational just hanging out time versus Darling's – I, I know there's some people that that was one part that they weren't they weren't too fond of you know they were hyper focused on where my my aunt my robots but no the fact that darlings is meant to be this anime that is more about the relationships about the people in the robots than the actual robots themselves like to me it makes sense it's good that we have these episodes especially because they're kind of the only things that make the ending like three episodes way less psychotic because at least you have been invested in the relationship between the characters because the first half of this show has so many great episodes like the gender rival episode like the beach like it's one of the few times i will be like fine fair have your beach episode because darling needs it darlings is predicated on you really liking these characters like because if you don't like these characters i mean you, you must really like the robots and the uh the Klaxosaurus, because I, I couldn't imagine why else you would be watching this series. And, and I mean, and it's funny. I mean, I mean, and first, I mean, for a series where the yeah, the robot you pilot the robots and the girls are like in that position, and that you have like a beach episode and all that stuff. It's like the fan service isn't like too exploitative. Like other the again, other than the fact of like the how the robots are. But even even that doesn't go full blown because you don't even see the positioning until the second episode that was something i noticed upon my rewatch here is that that whole first episode 
you just know that they're piloted by two people, but you have no idea about you know the details. And it, and even when we it, it's like fully shown, and it's also probably something where like I maybe this isn't the best like way to like I don't know to critique it, but like I feel they almost could have gone further with the whole like doggy style in the robot like i literally mean that because the first couple episodes when they show it they show that you know initiating you know the piloting sequence is painful for so another cool moment that they do with the show is uh the boys and girls in the robots are referred to as pistols and stamens uh the sex organs of plants so again we're going very hardcore in that like natural reproduction is like the driving force of this show so i mean even down to like some of the naming but in the first couple of episodes where they're actually like showing it, like they're actually kind of getting the audience into like, hi, this is the anime you're watching. Um, they show that like when they start piloting that it's painful to them that, you know, there's some uh, getting used to it that is involved. Like it's very, they lean into like the sex metaphor. And I feel they could have gone even further because they touch on it where like the kids don't understand like actual true human to human intimacy, but they are fully like their entire existence though is predicated on like doggy styling in a robot and so i thought it, they were gonna like have this idea where you know in in the modern day of humanity we believe that we can connect to people but some of us just don't know like proper ways for some some people relationships are difficult for some relationships get toxic i thought it was going to be this whole thing where like it was going to be this dichotomy where you would have these children literally doing sex positions not even understanding like like you said not even understanding jealousy not even understanding you know love and contempt and all those things so i thought they were going to kind of maybe lean into it that like you know that like the the positioning was going to be almost important or like hell i know this is kind of crude and gross but like other positions i thought they were going to make it be a whole thing where like no this is fully like aside from like biological penetration was sex in the robot as again to be that whole metaphor of like the way that the kids were connecting to each other the way that the kids were understanding each other were going to resolve things like their jealousy like you know missed promises with each other which again another little breadcrumb that was placed in the beginning of this show and i know that may be more on me than like the average anime viewing audience but i remember my first time watching through darling um waiting for mitsuru to have this like huge gay moment because you know you have this whole build-up where he begins the series as the asshole he doesn't like our main character because our main character is so perfect but can't pilot the robot and mitsuru is just like kind of an asshole about it and then you find out that it's because he has he had a childhood promise that wasn't kept, and we'll get to that. But like, I I thought they were going to use piloting the robot again to mean something more, to be this these interactions, to be these moments that the kids were going to be like, oh, I understand now. I it took me having to pilot the robot to understand, but I understand. And you get some of those. You get some moments between some of the teammates, um, on like how you know piloting the robot brings that that those moments to them but it again it's something that just starts to die off in this series especially again once we get all of our explanations of everything and once we know about the franks and everything there it's like oh no actually it means nothing is it the only thing that that mattered was y'all making some babies you hear especially because like narratively the 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 uh the uh, position in the franks doesn't actually matter like it never gets brought up like it matter no. It, it, ma- no, it, it matters on a thematic level like for like you see that and you're like okay yeah like you see the th- the like the themes of the entire series like oh yeah you you can piece it together easily but in terms of like the narrative there is never like a point where they ever bring up hey you know where like where that 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 works like you could literally like swap it around like just have it where they're sitting beside each other and yeah. nothing would change like practically it, honestly you could have pacific rimmed like there was literally no reason for it to be you know sexual positions in the robot like if you guys weren't going to like touch on it use it like i'm not i'm i wasn't one of those people that was like oh this show's weird because of the sexy robot no this the sex in the robot part is actually some of the coolest deepest stuff i'm just i'm upset that they just didn't take it all the way like because to me it's like you could literally take that as any sort of ideas again especially since they had it set up where the this was a thing that they have to do because 
what their society and their religion and their god is literally telling them that this is the only thing that they are meant to do. So, you know, then that leads into Hero being able to fly the robot with Zero Two, who is referred to as the partner killer, which again, I don't want to go super crude, but if you watch it, hella STD vibes. Hella STD messaging of, you know, ooh, you're going to get in the robot with this girl and something not safe is going to happen to you. And then he has these seeds with a bulging, like, blue, like, pustule on him. It's like, Hooray oh. for unprotected sex. She, that's what's with, with, the de- with a literal devil. With a literal Oni devil. <laughs> but, um, and yeah, so, so you have Hero piloting the robot with Zero Two. And again, the code names. We as we get later on to it, the the code names eventually become revealed that like the lower the number is basically how good they are at piloting the robot. There's actually another like specific reason that we'll get to, but the, all the kids have their numbers, and it's all meant to be like a sync, like a sync number. Like this is how close you are to being like the bestest Frank pilot. I also, yeah, I I I, I completely forgot why. Like I yeah, I forgot why she was zero two until I realized I, re- I remembered who the zero one was, and I'm like, oh okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So so of the of the crew, you you have Delphinium. So that's being piloted by zero one five. So that's Ichigo. There's your childhood friend, and zero five six. And that's Goro. So they're those two and Hero create the childhood your, best friend. Is, is the best friend. Yeah, 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 Goro is the quintessential best friend of like the the bro who will always be with you, even if even if it's like it pains him because he's always going to be third <laughs> even banana. at the cost of his own happiness, his own potential relationship, his own just no. This is a this is a man who is not the main character, and that is yeah. Well, that's how Trigger wrote him. <laughs> Uh, but but they're cool. So they're like the leader team, and again, all the robots are just cool, cool girls. And so their robot girl has uh, magma spears. Every it's all magma technology. Back to like how you mentioned in the original, the darling also has a very like environmental tone over everything. Again, it, it's futuristic Earth. It's all d- desolated. There's been widespread desertification to the point that like humans cannot inhabit the Earth. And it's all because we were harvesting the energy from the magma from our core. So, you know, even if the in the end the show's not about the environment and environmentalism, it's predicated on ideas. It already is about that, you know, resources have, have a consequence. You use up a power source, it's going to deplete. Um, I, I would say I would say there definitely is an environmental message, especially because you get to the whole thing of like, oh, like very early on, I was like, oh, the Klaxosaurs are attacking because the people are taking the oil from the earth. So if they don't take the energy from the earth, then the Klaxosaurs will stop. And yep, that is exactly where it go. Like that, that was because I forgot. Cause I think when I when I first watched when I first watched it, I was just kind of like on the thing of like, oh, the Klaxosaurs are the villains. I didn't really think much of it. But like now we watch it. Then you're like, wait, what, dude? Who? Who made this again? Oh, I I, 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 com- I yeah, because I completely forgot about like a lot of the stuff that happened with the Klaxosaurs at the end. So I was re watching it. I was like, okay, like yeah, because it, it had been so long. So I was like, uh, and only the exact ending had stayed in my mind that I forgot how the Klaxosaur stuff ended. So I'm like, okay, is it like? It, I was like, all right, so it, it becomes like, oh, the Klaxosaurs aren't really the bad guys. It's just like a situational thing. And I was like, yep, that's exactly how it ends up being. Is that oh, the Klax they're they're the bad guys, but more so in the fact that they're just fighting back against initial like it was it's like the people fought like punched first and it's like a thing of like oh by the by the time they're like well okay there, there's a there's a bigger threat to deal with let's stop and it's like you <laughs> it's, okay because you, you have like the thing at the very very end where they're like oh and we, we we put everything back in the earth and we never took out any energy again and it's like yeah it's ever again happy ending all right. hail solar power all, all hail the mighty potato uh so yeah so yeah so you have so you have delphinium you have your leader you have who, who again composed two thirds of our love tetrahedron? At, 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 it eventually develops into that. Uh, so then you have Argentia or Argentia, and so that's three nine zero Miku, and you have six 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 Zorame. So it's kind of what you mentioned. There are you're always bickering ones, but and the weird thing is, is that like over the course of the whole series, though they end up being like the most stable like team. They're the only ones that never really have an episode that tears them apart. They never really have any, like, 
battle related drama. Well, no, like, to, 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 they, to, well, to technically the gen, like the whole the, the odd couple episode is sent. Like the odd couple episode is the most that they have since like they were the two that started uh, the whole feud. So like yeah, but that's I, that's their only uh, like real thing. But yeah, but yeah, because it's very much like like the, the the generic like the high well like you, like you see in high school rom coms of the two the two characters that are constantly bickering with each other. But because they're constantly bickering with each other, it's they have they have like the best chemistry and like that that's what makes them come together. It's it's you're 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 uh, you're a uh, Raikou and Chitoje. Uh, exactly. However yeah, many, and the thing uh, that stinks is that Miku's a decent character. Like she has no real like. I have no issues with her characterization. Um, I hate that they touch on like the parasite's biology with her for like two hot seconds, and then they're like, eh, "Nope, never mind. We had nothing." It's almost like they had nothing interesting to do with Miku, so they just kind of left her. Because Zorame, I mean, I know a lot of people would see him as being equally as basic of a character, but I feel like he's really interesting in terms of like highlighting the parasite's relationships to like the adult society. Like, he represents, like, just the pure naivete of the parasites. Because even though Hero is, like, the bestest piloty boy uh, parasite, again, because he was someone at a young age that was like, oh, we can be more than just robo par- uh, robo pilots. Like, we can go see the world outside. We can yada yada. Um, Zorame is someone who is fully brainwashed in, like, the religion of Papa. Like, he is ready to die in a Frank's for Papa so that he can be an adult and live the adult life. Like he's obsessed with like the adults. And so, and it's, it's touched on just a bit throughout his dialogue. And then he's given the whole episode where he's able to go to the adult city and is able to see, you know, the state of humanity in the future where, you know, people don't really eat. They get their nutrients through IVs. Uh, a lot of people don't even live their lives. They're just in like happiness tanks that, and they're just getting direct serotonin direct, uh, like injected into them. Like insert your metaphor. For Here's whatever some the cyanide gas. Want. Thank you, Jesus. It, it's either uh, like, it's either to represent TV, social media, V, whatever the fuck. Like, I'll, but you know, humanity is just kind of in this state of life minus life sans life really and so i and i really thought like with zorame as well like that this was another thing that was getting gonna get built up that we were gonna have these scenes where this character was gonna i thought he was gonna have the more shinji related moments where like all of his ideals all of his beliefs were about to like shatter around him and he was gonna have to like figure out who he is then outside of like being papa's like death toy thing and they kind of touch on it like all the characters get this whole like post-war life and they get these post-war values but i really thought that with especially with zorame especially since like with that team there really wasn't much else that their characters were kind of going through so i i actually i I may have latched on but i really kind of liked what they were again they were bubbling up with zorame's characterization in the first half of the show with you know him being even though him being like the goofiest of the bunch was probably the one that was that took like his response or what he saw his his role in society of like as a parasite probably the most serious like he was the one that like had zero questionings of it he just wanted to know when the hell he could become an adult and I, the, the fact that they give him the scene where they're like you're not gonna be an adult and it's not like this i don't know i feel they could have gone a little more dramatic with him give zormi like a whole nother episode but um i don't know it's it, they, they end up pretty okay um I, I do like how the, their their robot girl, you know, she has the pigtail, she has the, the magma claws. I think magma claws are always a, a real cool uh, weapon choice as well. But yeah, but that's that crew. And then, then we get into the weird teams. Then we get into the teams that get a little uh, questionable. Because uh, again, like you mentioned, um, it's super weird too that like they fully label out like pistols and stamens. Like they literally like the, the, the positions are given positional names. It's not just, you know, two people. And so that's again where I start to have an issue with Darling and a Frank's very on the conceptual level. Again, this is m- way more than just, oh no, the ending is a twisty ending. Like I don't care. I can take a twisty ending. My thing is where, you know, you have it set up where, you know, you have these connections created in the robot to get the robot to pilot and it happens to be very similar to a way that we as humans naturally connect and that there is a lot of different options for how certain people can connect in that certain way and it's not set in stone of this position that position so to me 
like Darling and the Franks does a thing where they start to move around the kids in the robot. And I thought that was, again, I thought this was a breadcrumb. I thought this was us setting up the stage for how the ideas of how to pilot the robot. I thought those, that was something that was going to get like deconstructed within the show. I thought they were about to like tear down the whole idea of how a Frank should be piloted, like to its core. And I mean, we get that close. We get touches of it, but um, so cause, cause I want, I want to talk about this scene. So we have, we have a uh, chlorophytum. So we have the long range robot which is piloted by 196. So Ikuno, her, her name's a little different just because uh, Ichigo changed her name because she didn't like her original number name. And so they, they changed it up to make it nicer and funner for her. And originally she pilots with Mitsuru. So she's originally with, you know, the asshole character who's, you know, he doesn't like Hiro because in all honesty, he doesn't like Hiro because his heart was broken, guys. Like, I don't... I know, again, it is very much in my reading that I saw Mitsuru as instantly gay, but, like, dudes, you can't watch the first four episodes and be like, that boy does not no. have the gays. That boy has all Cons- the gays. Considering the whole thing is about the whole the whole thing of, like, oh, the, the pilots can only be, the, the pilots are connected with two people, and, like, this, the story pretty much points you towards, oh, those two people are, like, the ones that should be together, and you have Hiro, and you have Mitsuru being like, I want to pilot with you, Hero. It's like, yep, no, that, like, like I, I I, 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 I've debated with you about how gay something is, but I'm like, okay, no, this, this, that is clearly Mitsuru has the gay, he has the gays and as, as explained later, has the buys for Hero. And, and like, that's what I'm saying. Like, even with just that metaphor and that twist there, the idea that in the world that they set up in their story, that you have a child say, I want to pilot the robot with you. Like, that is hardcore, solid gold world building. Like, you've set yourself up for so much success that you've created a story and a world and a character where that situation and that kind of line, meaning that, can occur, and you go nowhere with it? And in fact, you backtrack it, and you're like, actually, actually, it has nothing to do with anything. So, so again, so so the Chlorophyum team starts with Ikuno, who... So we have Mitsuru in his anger with Hiro. And then you have Ikuno. And she also has a bunch of cool, awesome story moments in the first, I'm going to, like, first three-fourths. Because her, she, it doesn't really go too bad until, like, she just gets dropped from the story. But Ikuno, if, if Mitsuru has a misread case of the gays, Ikuno is full-blown the gays. No, and like, I, 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 I felt like, like, when, yeah, because when I, when I first saw the series, cause I, I, I was a dumb, ignorant boy. I, like, I, I didn't notice, I didn't notice any of the red flags with Ikuno, but on my rewatch, I am like, from like the, I think, like, literally every time she says anything to Ichigo, I'm like, yep, she has got the gays She's for blushing! Her. She is like, Every yeah. single time! And 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 then it becomes like like it is it is like quote unquote n- subtle like in subtle in quotation marks but then you get the whole like yeah when they do the swaps and she's like oh how about I pilot with each like she's like I want to pilot with Ichigo and Ichigo's like oh, okay they pilot it doesn't work and she's like oh I guess it didn't work and Ichigo's very mad about it and it's like yep that is like clear as freaking day and it's like yeah then i i'm glad and then at the very like other than like yeah with the the mitsuru stuff which they kind of like just kind of brush the side like at least the ikino ikino stuff get like i think it's episode 18 where they like they point like this is like the first time trigger like actually turns on a light that says gay on it like they they don't they don't try to like walk around it they don't do it without saying it no they literally point the flashlight and be like now we're gonna talk about lesbians and you're gonna see it and it's in the show where being the lesbians is not a good thing. Because that's the other thing, too. So, like you said, you have the episode where they the characters decide we're going to switch up the robots. And my jaw dropped when, you know, Ikuno asked for Ichigo to, to pilot the robot. And I thought, and this is this would be, like, the first moment in Darlings where I would, like, change a thing. I would have had it to where Ikuno and Ichigo attempted to pilot the robot, and you got a blip. I was waiting for it to be this sort of like nothing, 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 and then bloop, like that that hope, that shine that Ikuno is like oh, I can connect to to because that's the thing too. They don't see piloting the robot as as a sexual relationship. They see it as like just an act. They see it as like a, a 
using a, a controller, a joystick. It's just they're doing it at the same time. So I was hoping that we were going to get this, like, blip of hope for Econo. But instead, it's... And it's another thing, too. It's where it also starts to... It starts to turn on Ichigo's character. I know a lot of people have issues with Ichigo uh, just because of the triangle that it creates with her and Hero in Zero Two. Again, Zero Two at the time of the show airing was the waifu of the century, and I remember so many people got mad at yeah, Zero. Zero, zero, zero but, but I also remember that that yeah, Ichigo had a big fan base as well. Yeah, Zero Two and Ichigo was like, I mean, it, it's always the same. It was like, I mean, the new yeah. Ray and Asuka. They became yeah. the new Ray and Asuka. Of which girl did you prefer? But I do remember a lot of people were hating on yeah, or, Ichigo or, or because I referenced Nisekoi, Chitoje, and Onadira because Ichigo has a lot of Onadira, Onadira in her. A lot of it. So, but, but the, the, the thing for me that, like, it starts to sour her characterization is that you can tell she cares about Ikuno. I mean, Ikuno is just downright in madly love with Ichigo. And so, like you said, you have the episode where she's like, pilot the robot with me. Doesn't work out. And then you get more of these scenes where it's just like, oh, Ikuno looks at Ichigo this way. Or, you know, you get a moment here. You know, she agrees with Ichigo first over someone else. And then, you know, you have – then you have the actual episode. Like you said, you get the flashlight episode. You get the moment in trigger history, in pulling the trigger history, in animation here where, you know, we are done with subtext. This is a girl – who loves herself another girl and wants to be with that girl her whole life. And you have this emotional scene, you know, it's, it, it's a little yikesy. It's not full blown keys. Never like, Oh geez, this should not be occurring. But you know, you can know pins her down to the bed and she lets her know how she feels. And it stinks because, you know, you have this moment, you have this, this pure objective moment of queer representation. Um, you have, a very queer moment. In fact, this isn't just like, you know, easy peasy gayness, like, woo, fun time. Like, no, this is someone having to face real true emotions with someone that she's not even quite sure will, like, reflect those emotions back at her. Like, that is, that's the mood, my girl. And so she has this moment. She tells Ichigo her emotions. And Ichigo responds with, you know, well enough well and like i think this was one moment where i think you and i differed opinion wise because i felt to me that ichigo's response to that was just too low uh you know she gives her the hug she accepts her there's not any drama team wise which is good because you know anything made like five years sooner would have just made this the drama point but ichigo's response to this is just that this must be what life is about experiencing moments like this she doesn't even like talk to Ikuno about it. She doesn't say, like, yes, no, no. It's just literally this is what life is about. It's like, okay, but you need to respond to her. Like, she just confessed that she loves you. Like, the, the way I read, like, the, the way I read the, the whole scene was, the, I mean, because the whole thing is, like, it's not like, yeah, it, 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 it's not be like being like, oh, she she's dismissing her feelings or being like, oh, you shouldn't feel that way. It's because it's the whole thing of, like, oh, it, 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 it's kind of like, it kind of switches from her perspective to be like, oh, like, the, 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 this, this is how Hero felt with me of being like, I loved him so much, but Hero didn't re- reciprocate the feelings. And it's like, now she, now, now she, now she has, like, somebody who's pouring her out to her and now she, she feels bad because because she's like, I can't give those feelings I don't back, love you back. But I want. But it's like. But but like yeah. And, and it's how do you say? How do you like when somebody poor, especially her in that situation when it's like so quote unquote so different from everybody else. It's like how do you respond to that? And it's like it's such a hard question. And I, I think they do a really good job of being like there isn't really an easy answer. She just has to has. They both kind of have to just be themselves exactly. and be honest to themselves. And if like since those, and then that's yeah. really true because a lot of because that's something that. I feel Ikuno is used a lot for is she is kind of there to kind of give the context to Ichigo's struggle. Because again, you have Hero and Zero Two basically falling into this very literally storybook love. Like, you know, very princess, prince, true love, true love's kiss, yada, yada, yada. Versus she's meant to like be this display of like, yeah, but we've been together. We've like life moments, stuff like that. And so like it, it does kind of help curve off a lot of that why can't you just let ichigo or sorry why can't you just let hero and zero two be happy it's like well when someone likes her she sort of she sort of gets the other end of like you said the other end of the 
the relationship of, oh, oh, this is what having someone obsessed with me that I don't love 110% back feels like. It's like, oh. Because she also kind of chills on a lot of the uh, the jealousy rage that, that happens there, too, after the Econo scene. Um, which is, again, I'm glad it's in an anime. I'm glad that there's, you know, animated scene of, like, these moments, these queer moments. But, again, the fact that this ends up being the show where you know the moral is to is that you got to have one boy one girl to be making babies for you know the future of our world i i I, it sucks that this had to be the show where where, you know the 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 queer representation got so much more explicit because it was like it it feels very contradictory like i would have really preferred darling in the franks be gone like super super gay or at least if it was you know you know baby propaganda if it had just been that like from the beginning and there was no like hint of like this queer representation of of these ideas of you know overthrowing the the general ideas of you know sex and sexuality through piloting the robots again that's why i i get so frustrated with the shows that to me the concept of using sex and the robot like as an idea to discuss human sexuality and about different sexualities and about like the the rules and enforcement that society has on that like to me like they were setting up such a good scenario of ideas and i just i can't believe it was all used in service to you know to help recover japan's declining birth population like of all things of all damn things for this to have gotten like thank you shinzo abe like and and I think it's hilarious because you know now that we live in a a, a post Pandora box world, a lot of countries are suffering declining birth rates now. Like even before you know pandemic effects, just economic effects, stuff like that. So I think it's actually kind of hilarious and maybe more of a warning sign that like we could possibly in the next couple of years be getting more English like media in this same vein of Darling in the Franks that has these messages of hey. You ever tried having a baby? We really would love you to start having babies or else we face economic and social collapse. But again, I think it's super weird that Darling in the Franks, the show about the the kinky time and the robot, became this show that 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 was the show that this message was delivered on. I wouldn't have bet on that. that. If you had shown me the first four episodes and been like, yes, the ending, wouldn't have gotten it. Wouldn't have gotten it in like 20 guesses. Maybe, maybe the aliens. I maybe would have guessed aliens, but it only because this was a trigger show and been like uh. I, 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 at least Econo di- at least Econo does get her happy like she 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 gets she, she gets to, she gets to be with Naomi <laughs> she gets to be with Naomi even though there is there is that such a <laughs> weird thing of like oh I, I, out of nowhere we're we're, we're going we're going to we're, uh, we're going to give her white hair and we're going to put her on a bed for the rest of the series and then she's going to become a scientist and then but, but, <laughs> we're, we're going to do all this stuff to kind of get her out of the picture but the, but, the, but then we're also going to give her a girlfriend at the end too so it kind of kind of balances out the weirdness and it's just like a uh like I'm, I mean, like white, 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 white haired Econo does look cool, but it's like a, I don't, I don't, I, I, I can't even remember why that happened. It was like, oh, she was like, uh, she was like I piloting remember. the, ro- she was like piloting the robot, and she overexerts herself, and it like poops, yep. it poops her so, hair. So, so, but it was like, so there's two issues I have with how they end Econo because a lot of people, you know, despite the, a lot of other people have made the criticism that I've made that Econo is not the best queer representation out there uh, a lot of people like to fall back that like oh but they do give her a girlfriend at the end two things wrong with that number one again I, this is why i put that pin earlier is that the fact that they bring naomi back not only do they bring her back for some weird reason in all of the plantations and this is just dropped like towards the end of the series they just have giant caves of frozen sleeping people and it to me it was like they never explained why they don't explain the reason like why they're even doing that how she got in there when they literally launched her on a pod off of the plantation and then they bring her back to make her ikuno's uh her her gf waifu but with with the ikuno hair thing it kind of ties back to a few other like points that are like sprinkled again in in the beginning of the series is that so the kids were raised in in basically a garden. Again, we're going back to the the very the the plant translations. A lot of plant words because procreation is is the theme here. So so the the parasites are raised in a garden, and then once they're of a certain age, they get sent to whichever plantation they need to serve. Um, 
there's there's a middle section where you know when the characters all start getting their their memories back bless them um, but they go back to the garden and in there there is a mention that they've only been away from the garden for like a couple weeks when all of the flashbacks that show the kids in the garden and all of the kids that they show in the garden are like children children like four or five year olds versus the parasites are all physically I don't know, like 15 14 anime ages are weird like you can never truly guess it but they're older they're much older than what a few months would do to them so again it ties into the whole they're, they're not real humans they're they're a homunculus of some kind they're they're test tube grown literally to pilot the robot and die either in combat or the fact that they kind of drop hints that the the parasites have accelerated aging miku gets that streak of gray hair uh when they're like getting ready for the wedding that was the kind of thing that i mentioned that they they started to use her they were gonna use her and then it was just to show that like oh no the, the parasites are falling apart and so, yeah, like you mentioned, in one of the battles, Ikuno does this, like, super chargey blast, and it drains her life force or whatever, which is weird, because there is another parasite piloting that robot with her who doesn't get um, hyper-aged. And if for some weird reason, she's the only one, like, the hyper-aging stops there. Like, I know in the ending, they say that Ikuno is the one who figured out how to stop them from hyper-aging, but they had to hyper-age before that point... And then it's like, no, 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 we just needed to find a way to, like, set Ikuno aside so that, like, we everyone can have a happy ending except her because she clearly can't have the same type of happy ending that the other characters have when having children is the goal of the show. So, I, I don't know, like I said, it's, it's all very frustrating to me. There's so many ways, and, and it, it didn't need to be this way. There was no reason for for Ikuno to be to just get thrown hardly under the bus and then have the bus immediately back right back over her it's like god damn um but and then it's not even she doesn't even get like the worst the worst treatment there like honestly the ones I feel the worst for are the nines um so the nines are your like they're the evil crew you know Trigger loves to have like the the, the, e the bad boys the bad kids that are so bad um, so they're the ones they're basically they're basically Papa's supreme uh, supreme guard his his super, you mean his alpha his children you mean alpha it's from Luico they literally his name is alpha he, he he's an asshole white haired kid and in the English dub he's voiced by Justin Briner it's like they literally I I I like whoever like the the like for, first the whole thing yeah I mean a lot of these characters are similar are very similar to other I mean the uh, yeah uh, that but that's trigger uh, uh Kokoro is like exactly just a Hotako from Supernatural Battles uh, <laughs> literally the same even down to like the the the, the speech. Yeah, they they have they have a very like yeah they have a very like like the, the that chubby face. Uh, you uh uh Ikuno kind of has like I mean she she's like the glasses girl, it's, like very similar to uh, girl from Kiesniver. You have a Goro who has a lot of Hajime from Kiesniver. Uh, but the, then then you have uh, he, Hero's the weird one out because Hero's basically just uh Kirito from Sao. And then, uh, Ik and then Ikano is just like, uh, no, no, Ikano, uh, a, uh Ichigo, a, what's his name from, from Supernatural Battles? Yeah, uh, Ichigo is just blue-haired, uh, Asuna. So, like, you have, like, a lot of, you have, like, a lot of that, uh, stuff. Yeah, but then you have the, you have the nines, and it's like, yeah, literally, his name is literally Alpha, and it's like, I, I feel like that, that has to be intentional on Trigger Spart, and on Funimation, whoever decide, like, the, the, they oh, yeah. have, they have to have been like, yep, let's cast the last guy we had, we had voice, uh, uh, if you're going to do a reference character, might as well. No, I absolutely agree that they should have done it that way. And like I said in Lulico, I love whenever Justin Briner plays an ass. Like, like I feel like it's... Like, no, I, I hate it. I like... I Because I, I watched... the My first time I watched it, I watched it subbed. And I was like, every time he showed up, I'm like, God, this piece of shit. But then in English, once I hear Justin Briner's voice, I'm like, okay, no, I love this guy. Keep keep showing up. And I was like, yeah, every time he's, he's just being like a smug duck. He, he's being very... His very uh, flirtation... Like his flirtations with Ichijo... With Ichigo and like even like at the end like when you have like the stuff at the end when like the 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 uh, the adult uh, uh, ape abandons them and they're like like they're basically dying because they're like all we can do is just serve him and now that we got nothing we're basically like we're just crump like crumps of like nothing so so yeah just to go back to the nines well I'm gonna circle back to them 
but just because I was missing one more Franks, I was missing a, a Janista. So that is a Kokoro's robot. So so Kokoro, like you said, is is basically you know your nice girl character, and Darling does the most with her. They try to do a lot of their tropey plays with her because um, our our nice girl is a is a thirsty girl. She is a very very thirsty girl like i have never seen an anime character that has wanted a baby put into her so bad and not even like in the whole ha 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 she wants a baby like no this main character's like motivation is baby make it um you know you have the whole beach episode where she discovers an old book that kind of clues her in on where babies come from and so from there she kind of gets motivated that she wants to leave a mark on the future she it's it's very similar to heroes wanting to see the world she wants to leave you know a permanent mark on the world and she feels that you know having a child is the best way for her to do that um and so she she has this kind of she has these moments where like she's thinking about that stuff and then she sees mitsuru and she's like "Ooh, girl I would love for him to be the one to put a baby in me. So, like, you know, you have the whole scene in the uh, the flower garden, which, you know, kind of gives me Icky Utna vibes, even down to, like, the parts where she starts taking off Mitsuru's uniform. Which, okay, sidebar, the uniforms for the, the uh, parasites, they're based off chromosomes. There's a reason why the boys have a big red Y and the girls have a big red X. Like, again, it, it's not even – the fact that the show could have started as just this – discussion on sex sexuality it, it it just hard lines into this whole you know procreation and making babies but um so yeah so kokoro is all about i i want me to have a baby and what happens is the nines being the special guard of papa there are some episodes where they have to stay in uh, their house their, their house that's also called a missile time which uh, you know, it's, it's a pretty obvious translation of mistletoe, which is biologically a parasite. So I, again, I, I love the naming conventions that they went on with, with this show. Some of them are a little too on the nose, but I mean, I think that's just more of a, a translation thing. Like, I'm sure if I was maybe more of a native French speaker or something that like pistol and stamen would not feel as like on the nose. But uh, so... Kokoro is this one who wants to have a baby, which is against the rules. It's against the rules for, like, regular humanity, but hella no for test tube baby humanity. He's like, you ain't making no babies. Um, and so the nine show up, and they have this whole confrontation where, um, again, Ikuno and lesbians may get thrown under the bus in this show, but no one takes it harder than non-binary folks. Like, I think it's crazy that the bad team guys, like, that the shitty asshole characters, their whole idea is that, you know, gender is fluid, that sex is fluid, and that it really doesn't matter, like, who's doing what or whatever. And I just think it's super fucking weird that that becomes, like, the negative point. That the, I was fully expecting, like, the nine's position to be like you know the trigger the trigger moral revelation that like you know the you don't have to pilot the robot this way like we said at the beginning of the show but you should be able to think beyond that and anyone can pilot the robot with anyone and you could probably make an even stronger robot if you just pilot with who you want to uh but no that's not that's not this anime so instead the like gender fluid pilots are like ew you guys are gross genders gender sucks and everything and i i think it's super weird that they have it to where ikuno is the one who's upset at that because she kind of agrees with it because she's like tortured by the by the confines of sex and gender it's like you guys are making a lot of drama for something that like has a way better solution and like even with the nines i really liked it that like when they show them fighting in battle like um with alpha he he's very masculine presenting by anime standards like he looks like a boy the how they have him in the front position as well for uh piloting the franks i thought again you kind of going back to how mitsuru wanted to pilot the robot with hero and all that i thought this was going to be like this thing where like maybe our main characters were going to be like oh wow look at those two boys or those two non non-binary characters like piloting the franks just fine on their own maybe it doesn't have to be boys and girls but it doesn't no instead the fact that they're more fluid and they're less they don't obey the rules of like procreation to pilot their franks is the bad thing like they're put down for it and like they're punished for it even within the plot and to me it's like what happened here like i thought this was the this was going to be the show that was going to like 
blow the roof and like talk about like constructs and stuff i thought we were gonna have like a whole utna moment where like this was gonna be a thing about the patriarchy but like no no the uh the weird non-binary gender kids are the bad guys and they all die miserably so i'm sorry to everyone about the messaging in this show but it's i don't know like that was where it got really hammered home like they could have had ikuno's whole drama and her whole like conflict within and it would have felt organic you know if you were gonna have the one gay character and just have her have the shit life cool whatever but the fact that they had the the non-binary team just be like no you have to pilot the robot this way just kind of i don't know it, it was definitely a huge thing that made me lose a lot of interest in the show even before we started getting to the episodes that explain like the history of the robots the history of the colonies and the plantations because ho oh, doggy the show just like loses it once it tries to actually explain all of its shit yeah, like I feel. I feel like. I feel like what the the story was trying. Mean, like they like they they really didn't do the best job with it. But I think the intention, like with the with uh, Econo's whole scene following up uh, the nines, kind of like their big declaration, is the whole thing of like oh, like what 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 the, it's it's kind of like the thing of like all, everybody is like everybody's opinion is supposed to be valid, and that it's mm. it's the idea is that like Papa and Ape and their like their whole like. Uh, their whole like tyrannical like rule over dictating what is like it's it's whole thing like oh their rule is right and the whole this whole idea of like oh the nines the parasites you know everybody's own feelings of what they want to do are valid and it's like it's the people who are looking down at everybody and dictating like the rules of like oh what they believe is correct or not is like that 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 is like that is like the problem and like what they need to deal with so i think like in that i like it's the, that, that the whole the way it's like portrayed in that episode i think is fine for Addis, but the fact that the uh, that they don't really like delve onto it they don't really delve into it like later like like the most of it is like yeah is uh alpha alpha pairing up with uh hero to pilot uh strelitzia in like the female pose because it's like oh yeah we can we can like do both we can do uh, both things and like that 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 that's portrayed in like a positive light so it's like i feel like if they would have gone into it a bit more they, they could have like gone around and be like oh yeah like the nines are valid just as much as everybody else's rather than being like oh the nines are wrong they're right ikono's kind of in the middle of being like oh she, she, she she's good so she's allowed to yeah, be she <laughs> becomes the middle ground she's yeah. a victim in this i don't understand how she's meant to be like the middle grounds like no guys like <laughs> yeah it, it, it is yeah like a lot of things it's like i feel like it's not like completely terrible but it's like it, to 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 quote uh originator of everything persona 5 not terrible but not impressive not impressive either yeah and so so you have that um and then just because we'll probably get into we'll get into i'll, I'll get back into like kokoro here but just because there is one more character there is futoshi he is the fat one, and that's it. <laughs> he likes. Like, I am sorry, but he is a. That is. A, that's what the show gives him. And that's all he gets. And and also like, and, and also his role is to get friend zone even worse than Ichigo. It's. I mean, I, 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 I do like, like I, I do like it because I think it's like it's a smart thing of being like he's seeing how Hero and Zero Two are acting, so he'd be like, oh, I want to have that kind of relationship. So he's like he's being yeah. ve- he's being very very pushy with like it's like it's it, it is like without clearly considering awkward. Kokoro's yeah. feelings. Yeah, so it's like he's like, being it, very it, awkward it, and like like not to use it in the derogatory like online sense, but like he's getting he he's a white knight. Like he's yeah. he's a he's a character who is so indulged in his own feelings of selflessness that like. Like, you're not taking that other person into account. Like, he just assumed that, like, oh, yeah, Kokoro is mine and that we're together because we pilot the robot. Again, I thought it was meant to play on that idea that, you know, people have in these types of relationships um, where, you know, if, if they do get, like, sexual, where, you know, one person might be fully invested in it and not cons- be considering whether the other person is involved with it. It's, uh, it, it, it's not fully... It wouldn't have been tied into maybe this specific idea, but it was definitely where I thought they were trying to go with the uh, the berserk mode. So all of the Franks have this whole mode where if uh, it's not shown too much in uh, the show, I think they show it a lot more in the manga though, which I think we'll we'll talk about and we'll like point just kind of as we when we get to like plot and we get to that ending. But all of the Franks have this whole mode where like instead of being a, a cool fighter girl, they turn into like a beast monster if. 
at, so far they showed where if one of the pilots tries to pilot it by themselves or if one pilot is like not in sync with like the other pilot like it's meant to be this whole consequence of not having two synced pilots and i thought it was trying they were trying to go again i saw everything as a metaphor so like Again, uh, my whole first viewing of Darling and my disappointment, and it was probably more on me and having all of these expectations. So it definitely helped to like do this rewatch, knowing where everything was going to go, knowing that Mitsuru wasn't going to, you know, get to pilot the robot with Hiro. But um, with the Berserk mode, I thought it was meant to be like this whole idea of consent that, you know, yeah, it's very powerful to have these two people linked together, but you truly have to have them both working together. You can't just have one person doing all the pool. And I thought like that was kind of what they were trying to, to get at that. Like, you know, they were going to use these berserk modes for times when, you know, the pilots were at odds or something that could be, you know, seen as like a metaphor of like either toxicity or non-consent. I thought they like, again, you're using sex in the robot as a metaphor. Let's use it. Let's actually talk about it is kind of just again where darling gets frustrating and you kind of see it you see streletzia's berserk form a couple times and the whole liger zero vibes are super appreciated love it but i don't know i feel like they re- it was one aspect of the franks that i think would have really i'm glad that they expand upon it in in the manga but i think really needed to be expanded upon in the show because it really would have helped you know solidify the identity of the franks as these unique you know giant giant mecha robot uh fighter girls yeah and i and i do think like yeah like how the relationship uh between futoshi and uh kokoro is handled is like it's like it's like he he he, he um, yeah he, he's especially because like again like th- these are people who have like never had these kind of feelings or relationships before so you kind of have like you, you have them like they like they, they need to like learn how to deal with how like when, when when she ends up leaving him and he's like very very like overly upset about it but it's like he has to learn that oh he's, no he, he's he has innocently to let it toxic go. yeah is- yeah, exactly. Like, 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 he, he's, he's legitimately being toxic. Like, if this was like two actual adults like acting this way, like this would not be healthy. But you know, again, these are these lab lab test tube babies. Like, they've only had emotions for months. Like, they've only had names for months. And and I think it's important to have that. And I think it would have been more important if, like, you know, if the message had stayed with like looking at differences in relationships. Is like I thought, you know, they could have used Fatoshi as this whole like friends with benefits thing they're like yeah he pilots the robot but he's not piloting the robot with like his life partner he's just piloting with someone who he's able to you know pilot it safely and i don't know like like i said i i took the metaphor in my own head way further than even the own show does (laughs) yeah I think, and uh, i guess and we uh we should probably just yeah let him then quickly mention uh uh, about our 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 our, our Strelitzia between Hero and Zero Two, because I want I want to say and, that and then the main character girl. Yeah, yeah, because the uh, the because uh, the first time uh, the first time I did watch uh, when I watched Frank's, I was on team not Zero Two, like like because I, I I've always talked to you about like, like the 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 those char- oh. those characters always kind of like like just like the 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 manipulative bitchy ones, and it's just like that was all I kind of saw Zero Two as of just being like the ones who was like yeah she's she's like yeah she's incredibly manipulative, incredibly toxic, dangerous, and I've just being like like I, like, I, I was. I was full on team Ichigo just being like, yeah, just go with, go, go with the pure girl. Don't go with the dangerous one. But but this was all like up before the first half of the series, because once you get to that second half, like once you get to that, the halfway point and you get the reveal and you get the flashback and all that stuff, that was when I kind of came around and being like, okay, I can understand. I like, and, and, and then kind of knowing that right. on rewatch, I was able to appreciate zero two a lot more because it's like, Oh, like I see zero two as, as the, the, this, like she's this, the destined love. Like, you know where this is going. Not, not even the destined love more of like, she, she's a, she's a seductress is she, she's like, she's like, she, uh, she's manipulative, but kind of in a, she's a predator. Yeah. She, she, in a, in a very, like in, 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 in like the hero thing kind of be, is a thing of like, like, uh, it was what I said about, uh, about keys and Iver, my biggest problem was that I felt that uh, 
Katsuhira and Noriko had pretty much no chemistry outside of the fact that, oh, they liked each other back then, so that means they're destined to be together. And I was like, I just don't see it. What what works about Franks is that Hero and Zero Two actually genuinely build up chemistry over that first half before the reveal happens. So it isn't just it doesn't just a, oh, we knew each other back then, now we have to love each other. It's oh, here like Hero, like I mean the first time like Hero is like with Zero Two, all he cares about is piling the Franks. Like he's he doesn't care like what Zero Two is, what she looks like, what she does to him. It's like, I can pilot the Franks. That's all that matters. Like, when he gets to pilot the Franks with Ichigo for a little bit, it's like, oh, yes, I'm like, I'm happy. It's like, it's all good. But then it only like stops because it's like his, because he doesn't know, but it's like, oh, his heart's not fully into it. And it's like, the more time he spends with Zero Two, the more he's like, oh, I like being around her. It's like, I want to know more about her. And it's like, he, he's kind of, he, he's slowly starting to develop like an actual a love and attraction and zero two is being like very it's 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 done very well and like you don't know you don't know what zero two wants is like oh zero two is like yeah she's she knows she's very dangerous you know yeah she's she's very aloof and mysterious and like yeah she's she's playful in both a bad and in both a good and very bad way so it's like yeah you're you don't know where this is gonna go until yeah you get to the end you get to like the point of the flashback and you find out that oh yeah she she's basically doing it, it, it's kind of the, the whole thing of like oh she's doing all of this because she wants to be reunited with her darling from back then only for it to turn out that oh the person that she's been kind of using up is her darling and now she's like oh fuck what did i do it's like she she kind of really like <laughs> i loved that i loved how they let how they made zero two like face immediate consequences like it wasn't just a whole like yeah it was a monster girl but that's okay and then show ends like i like how it's a midway show thing they're like no girl you were trying to murder your darling. Yeah, it's like it, it, it the 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 toxic elements of the relationship are like actually de- like they're actually like addressed and developed, and it becomes like like I'm glad that it wasn't like because I like I, I completely forgot and I I just I thought that because especially watching the first episode like I just assumed that oh zero two knew that hero was her darling the whole time until it got to that point and she's like wait a minute it's you and I remembered oh yeah I kind of like the thing of like oh yeah no no shit she wouldn't realize it was him like they were both like she was like three years old it's like obviously like she wouldn't remember but it's like yeah I think it's it's a much better thing that she doesn't realize that it's him until then because yeah because instead of it being like oh I'm manipulating you to become like the person that I want like I'm to make you the perfect specimen instead it's just oh I'm doing what I've been doing all this time until now and realizing oh yeah what I like she's even she's even she's like recognized uh, that everything that she's been doing has kind of been wrong in a way but it's like all she Toxic. Cares, yeah, all she cares about is just like i want to be human and i want to reunite with them and all the, the 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 people like the adults are like if you keep be, because papa told me yeah let's, let's also include it she didn't just come up with this idea and was just going on a rampage she was told by papa that if she killed enough classosaurs she would get to be human ergo would get to be back with her darling who is also the person that she has been calling darling this whole time. That's also, I feel, what kind of, like, adds to, like, sort of, like, the the fuzziness of, like, wait, how do they know each other? Is the fact that she calls this guy darling that she had originally called darling, and he is the same darling that she is trying to darling reunite with. And it's like, oh. Oh. Yeah, it's also probably like a thing of like, oh, okay, because she, she she sees something special in Hero, so she's like, oh, I'm gonna make you my darling, but it's like, it's like a darling for as long as he lives, like, because she's even like, because she, she doesn't intend for him to live either, because yeah. yeah, so so basically that whole first half, so you have you know, Plantation nineteen, you have them being initiated, you have them like starting out being a team, and then you have Hero run into Zero Two. And then they pilot it during the whole ceremony where they're able to take down the Klaxosaur. And that's when Hero's like, oh, hey, I can pilot the Franks. We're good. But Zero Two has the whole curse of if you pilot with her three times, you die. So you have a couple episodes of you know that building up to nothing. It literally just builds up to uh, Hero and Zero Two trusting each other because you know he was willing to pilot with her enough times. So then, you know, then they pilot together with the team for a couple times. There's the one mission where um, I really like it where, you know, when two plantations combine and they exchange resources, it's called kissing. Because, again, it, it plays on to the, to the parasites where, like, they know nothing about actual, like, human interaction. They just know 
put on skimpy suit, get into the position, get into the robot. Like they don't see even that as like the the weird thing that it is. And so, and I do like how like the whole discussion on kissing even carries over into the beach episode. But you know, they have this meet, they have that whole like arc, I guess, where you have the they meet the other team and you see just how different team 19 is to like normal parasites and then they win the battle and then they all go back to the garden because they have to do maintenance and do all that stuff and then that's where again where the amnesia all plays in and that's when we find out why zero two forgot the promise that he made to mitsu and we find out why zero two she does the things she do and what the fuck happened with hero because we get a lot of flashbacks to again to them being in the garden it's usually to set the to show you know, the parasites history is to show that, you know, these were not kids that had normal, you know, parent childhoods that like their names had to come from literally another kid making number puns, which again, best type of puns and English really needs to have like its own similar thing. But yeah, then, you know, that halfway moment is where you get the flashbacks is where you get the reveals. Um, and like you said, I, I agree with you as well, that because we had that whole first half of, you know, plot episodes and the occasional like hanging out episodes, that once you have those actual plot reveals of their past that they forgot, it, 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 it it's still solid. It's still very, very solid because, you know, they still have, like you said, the modern relationship. They you still have the things that they did that they do remember. And now it just kind of adds that extra scoop of, oh, not only do they have all this. They also, like, super love each other as a kid as well. And then, you know, it's where we get introduced to, to the storybook. It's where we kind of get introduced to some of the properties of Zero Two's blood. Uh, because uh, she's Zero Two to a certain someone. Uh, actually, all of the children are. But, um, but, yeah, so you have the whole scene where she gets her flashback. She gets her memories. Hero gets his memories. Um you have a couple episodes after that where like the team starts to hardline take hero side and start to like look at zero two as a full threat. For, for first, I want to say that, that I, I yeah I remember back when I watched it and even rewatching it now like the that whole that whole I think it was episode twelve is the whole flashback. Episode. Twelve, yeah, I, yeah, I always the, remember it too. It, it's twelve. The, the, the whole flashback I'm like that hit that hit me hard. Like I'm like that gave me like I'm pretty sure I, I teared up like watching because I'm like oh it's just just so beautiful and it's just like oh god and it's a, and yeah it, it hurts real bad and you just kind of everything kind of everything comes together and like yeah you you get those kind of three you get those kind of like those three episodes afterwards where it, it was because i had just watched a silent voice before then all i could think of was like oh the ending of a silent voice where it's like oh everybody's kind of like the, 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 there's the one person who's like in bed and everybody else is keeping like they're, they're everybody is keeping the two lovers away from each other because they're like no you two yeah. are toxic for each other and it's like oh we can't let them like can't let them speak because it's bad but it's like oh just just and you're like just, just let them speak for once and everything will be fine then there's the misunderstanding where she freaks out and beats the shit out of all them and he's like what the hell did you do and then it's like oh no they're gone and it's like oh you think and then ich- ich- ichijo I- ichigo tries to <laughs> ichigo tries to cuck him and he's like nope and he's like, nope. And he's like, oh. <laughs> you, even true, though she true tried love, to, girl. Yeah, true love. She tried to kill you, but he still. She tried to kill you, but he still loves her. That that that's true love right there. And then the and then the right. ending of episode fifteen. The ending of episode fifteen, which I saw memed all the time because it's just the like the 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 uh the the their uh, mouth movements just back and forth. like everybody just re-edited them with like with with with, with like with like uh the funniest one was seeing like them re-editing it with dog noises. Because oh, no. it's just them barking back yeah. at each other. And uh, something that also just kind of throughout the show that I think is real cool aesthetic. Um, so this show doesn't do the whole trigger like red text that like smashes on screen a bunch of stuff. Would that have improved Darling? Eh, questionable. We're not too sure. But um, Darling, on the other hand, does prefer instead to do uh, fun things with its aspect ratio. I do like how just throughout the whole damn show there'll be times where it goes into a widescreen, a full screen box screen um and then it's always for for reasons it makes the show feel all artsy and shit as well too but um i do like when when those moments also pop up uh throughout the series where they play with the the aspect ratio yeah you have a so so you have you know character introduced everyone's distrusting zero two but then oh it turns out we all were from the same orphanage so then there there's you get to these moments where they actually are starting to come together um they have a big battle um, for their plantation where they're trying to, 
to save themselves. Um, and they end up, I think it's really great because after that big battle, um, the plantation is kind of in a uh, torn and run down state. And it kind of highlights just sort of the parts of the show that really, that are about, you know, growing up in childhood as well. How in the beginning, the children are given like instantly made food. You know, they pray to Papa that, that that food is on their table. They don't do their own laundry. They don't clean their own place. There's there's they, they refer to them as what was it? Mysterious caretakers or invisible. Yeah, caretakers, invisible caretakers. But, but but they're literally fully taken care of. Like they are like any other child. They are bathed, clothed, and fed through outside forces. And then what happens is once uh, the plantation gets torn down and they're having to stay in the the building on their own, they have to learn to make their own food. They have to learn to set up their own stuff. Um, I, I really do like the whole scene where, um, where they make their own uh, dinner and they all gather around the table and then they sit down to pray for it. And they actually ask, it's like, wait, why are we praying to Papa? We're the ones who made this food. So it starts to become that whole – You start the story starts to turn into this thing where look at these children uh, develop self-reliance. It goes super ham when we get to the end and like they have to literally figure out how they're going to live on the planet. But I do like, again, how we start getting these crumbs of things being allegories and metaphors for these other things that, you know, development and – and this, those connections and then how like these children are literally children, not like even though they're in the bodies of teenagers, they are just little babby babies that don't even know how to feed themselves without Papa giving them the food. And they have to literally learn to take care of themselves so that they can grow up. Um, yeah, I, I I I love those. I I, I love those. It, it, it's it's the 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 three episodes after episode fifteen. Yeah, because episode fifteen, even though like episode twelve is like the halfway point, episode fifteen is like the technical halfway point because that that's that's the one where Hero and Zero Two finally come together for good, and then the 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 the, the opening switches for episode sixteen. You have those three episodes, which are basically just yeah, the kids the kids chilling like on on the on the house all by themselves, and you have like you. It, it's cool to see like Zero Two kind of make a complete personality shift of like oh now now she's like being like openly friend like because before she's she was very amb- ambivalent to all the girls and just everyone else but now she's like she, it was she, a bit she, obnoxious and it was going on for a bit too long like people were wondering when it was going to end <laughs> yeah and, and, and now she's like actively going out of her way to like hang out with them play with them like help help them clean like like she, she's actually yeah she's yeah she's being like an actual like she she, she, she gets to be her playful self but not like an obnoxious so uh, like I, i've seen like some people be like kind of criticize that of being like oh now zero two became a completely different person but i'm also like the, there isn't a reason for zero two to act that way after that big moment it's like yeah like she she, she was she was she was a yeah, she, she she was a dick for a reason but it's like now there's like there's no reason for her to be to be that so now it's like seeing her be friendly and like trying to develop these like positive relationships with like the rest of the teammates is like the, is is genuinely really great that's genuinely really great to see and the fact that you get like three full episodes of that before everything kind of like goes off the rails in episode 19 is like i think, I think that's genuinely really like i think like the, the whole the, the way it ends like with like the the, the two uh with um uh mitsuru and kokoro kind of having like their their makeshift wedding and then it getting like demolished and attacked by the nines and <laughs> they get raided by the yeah, government pope yeah. god shit oh it's, it's, it's insanity yeah, and, and yeah, because it's like, because then they, they all get pushed onto the ship, and it's like, pretty much episode 19, I wouldn't say that's when it, like, th- th- that isn't when it gets bad for me, but that is probably, that that is the point when it's like, everything goes off the rails, and everything becomes much more uh, conflicted, uh, I will say. But like, hold, like, wait, 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 so, so, so again, so, so let, let's, let's, let, let's recap here, okay? So you have the first half of Darlings, you have all the great setup, you have the introduction of characters, characters being sassy, characters having drama, you know, very ki- keys and ivory. All right. Then episode 12, you know, we get our reveal, we get our backstory. And then, like you said, then we have these, these episodes where it's just on the kids. And again, this is when Kokoro's thirstiness has reached absolute overload maximum. Like she wants a baby. She wants a husband. She wants a whole fam. Like she wants a familia which i think is cute which i think is great because you know it does lead again to that part where the kids decide that they're just gonna throw their own wedding like they don't know they didn't like two weeks ago they didn't know how to feed themselves they didn't know how to wash their own clothes and now they're off 
getting themselves married and hitched. And it's hilarious because you have the whole scene before where it's beautiful. They're all wearing their uniforms, cherry blossoms. Like, it, it might as well be clan ad. Like, it might as well have been, like, a high school love story. And then, yeah, then the government shows up and is like, what makes you think be, like, literally they get, they all get arrested for het- being hetero. Like, the, the government's like, how dare you? We're trying to turn you all non-binary. Like, we can't have you getting married and having kids. Which, again, okay, like, Kokoro gets her baby. Like, Kokoro full on. To me, I thought, again, I thought it was going to be this whole thing that, like, Kokoro would, like, try to have a kid. But the fact that they're not humans. I thought they were going to, like, set up for this whole thing where, like, she really wants to have a kid. But her body just is not able to, like produce children but that's not really a point that this show wants to have it said the point again is to make sure you have babies so kokoro gets herself a baby and uh yeah and then the government all comes and uh takes them away because they need to get reprogrammed because if you thought the whole hero meets through zero two memory shenanigans was all the memory shenanigans you were gonna get in this show oh no 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 there's more memory nonsense that occurs because everyone gets shipped off back to the garden and Mitsuru and pregnant Kokoro get their memories wiped. Wait, wait, which is also the, like, I think it's like, it's how stupid, like, why, like, how stupid would you be to do that? Because it's like, oh, not only, it, not only do you have, like, everybody else, like, they, they bring them back to them, and they're like, the, the same team, yeah, they bring them back the to the same, same team, team, who knows what happened, and so, like, they're like, what's going on? But you have Hero and Zero Two who are like, hey, wait a minute, this happened to us, and it's like, so they literally, like, so then, like, the first thing they do is to go and complain about it, so it's like, why would you do that? Because it's like, oh, it did, it, 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 like it, I'm, I, I, at that point, it's like I feel like at that point, because since like they're literally getting to the the ending, so they're like, so like that's yeah, like yeah. like pop like Papa now. They're they're like we literally don't care about what I'm, well, all, all all we do. Uh, the only thing we care about is them. Like yeah, we we we, 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 we don't want them to love. We don't want to have the have, we don't want them to have the kids. So that that's all we care about. D- d- does does it does it mess with uh, does it mess with their relationships? Dude, can they can they see blindly through us? Yes, we don't care. We're just gonna do it. Don't care. So, okay, so so since we're here, so since we've built ourselves up to, you know, Kokoro being pregnant and about the ending shit, hidden fan, like, so this is where, if, if you haven't watched Darlings, this is where it starts to get fucking weird. Like, everything that we had beforehand was very cohesive. Everything was in service to something. No one knew what, but up to this point... Darling in the Franks is a solid and could have been one of the best shows. There, 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 there's one, 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 one more thing in order to stay positive before we get to the like the to get to the bad stuff. There's one other thing. I want to that, talk about the intro too. Yeah, no, I was about to say because yeah, we haven't talked about Kiss of Death yet, so we should talk about Kiss of it's Death first. Good, 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 good. I'm glad we're on the same page here because this is this is about to get crazy, children. But uh, I love Kiss of Death. I think um, this was probably when Trigger was at its strongest in terms of OPs. Because, uh, it's spoilers for the rest of our podcast, but you have this opening, you have Gridman's opening, um, BHA's opening. Like, this was, like, at the moment where Trigger anime openings were, like, the music in a Sonic game. Like, it didn't matter if they served you hot fucking garbage you knew that opening was going to slap. Look at Kisniver. Well, that's, that that would be referring to Kisniver as a uh, steaming hot shit. Well, no, that yeah, yeah. Kis, Kisniver isn't steaming hot, but I mean, like, like e- even that one where, where the quality was uh, kind of all over the place. Yeah, lay your hands on me is still phenomenal. So it's like, yeah, so even no matter what, yeah, and then Kiss of Death. Uh, I, I feel like I like uh, Lay Your Hands on Me a bit more as a song, but yeah, Kiss of Death is still like. Bo- both openings i think are great and i what i love what i love about like because for some reason i always like this is like maybe like some like mandela effect or whatever i'd always assume that the series had two openings but no it was just it was kiss of death both times but what i thought was so brilliant was that the like it's the same song but the key the key that the song is played in in the second opening is different i think it's the second verse too because it's it's like gurren Logan where they do uh so so Ryo days they use the first verse for the first opening and they use the second verse for the second opening. Yeah, and it's so cool because it's like it, it basically completely uh 
changes the meaning of the song. Like, like in the first, like the first half is very like eerie and menacing, and it's like, oh, what's gonna happen? Like the 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 will you will you taste the kiss of death? Is this is it, it's it's this ominous uh this ominous kind it's of a seduction. like seduction. Yeah. It's very seductive because it's at the point where Zero Two is still in her predator position. Like we don't know if piloting the robot with Zero Two is you know the quote unquote kiss of death or if she's the kiss of death or you know like it's 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 a very good uh choice of of song yeah. for for both openings i agree yeah and then when you get to the second opening which is like yeah which is right after that which starts with episode 16 so right after hero and zero two finally actually become a couple and it's like oh you it, the, the the song it's like it's a lot like the the instrumentation is a lot lighter it's a lot softer it's a lot more like like not not like completely happy go lucky but it's a lot more positive for positive focus it's more melancholy yeah so then will you will you taste the kiss of death becomes in, instead of a will you will you accept me even though i may kill you you it's will you will you continue to love me even though we may die and it's like it's a much more will, kind of like yeah yeah end. it's a it's a it's a positive bittersweet rather than kind of an yeah an, an ominous an ominous menacing tone i just i love i love whenever like you can like you can rechange like just one line of dialogue in different circ in different contexts can just completely change an entire narrative and it's just like it works so well and it's just because yeah, it's like the reds of the first opening and the blues of the second oh, it one is right and then the second's all blue and stuff. Yeah, it, the, the, it's it's just yeah, the, it's the, the 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 imagery the, I, the the imagery in the first opening is a lot be, is better than the second one, but the second one's still like pretty strong. Uh, I, I agree. Um, I think my favorite part of like both openings is so in the first one, I really love when they're showing like the teams on the robots because it's also when we get the uh, the team the first team switch when we get uh, when Futoshi and Mitsuru switch. Uh, which robot there are that they pilot on. And I do love how the opening changes to reflect that. Um, the openings do a bunch of little minor changes on that. And I love those. Like those to me are like, that's the good stuff with opening. So in the first one, when you, when it's showing the cross and it shows, you know, that Ichigo and Goro pilot one robot and it does it for all the other robots. I think those are super cool because they bring that imagery back in the second opening where they have the two members of each robot team just kind of like sleep floating in the water. And again, and uh, that one's also cool because Mitsuru's hair changes for a uh, pre and post haircut. So I think they have him with Kokoro in like both versions, but they do change up to have his short hair in uh, the second version of the second opening. But uh, I love that scene. And then in the second opening, one of my favorite, like it's one of those like, emotional moments like i really love it even though it's not that big of a deal is uh in the opening when um all of the parasites reach their hands out uh the one where they're first side by side and then they all kind of like claw up together like i i think that's just one of the cool scenes because i thought they were gonna go somewhere where like their whole like parasite team and again again this was still back when i thought that this show was gonna have a message way better than just having babies but um i, I do i agree with you that i do Kiss of Death, the song itself, is really amazing, and then used in the context of the openings and then what's shown in the openings. Um, no, Darlings continues, triggers, like, stride of killer banger OPs. Um, and, and and also a one uh, a a a a one is known for some pretty like I mean like the the uh, the uh, the sword art online ones uh, uh, Kagi Sama love and uh, love is war has some amazing ops so it's like yeah they they they, they, they both uh, they both kind of like put yeah putting together basically just dead yeah, dude they're they're doing they're doing some good shit yeah and it also reveals that uh the uh the production name for darling the franks is a uh, code zero code zero, zero, zero. Dude, yeah. <laughs> The 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 the, yeah. the, the series it, it 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 is it is credited as being created by Code Zero Zero Two. No 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 yeah no no uh, zero zero zero. And I'm like ah you 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 crazy <laughs> crazy yeah yeah cause, yeah because I remember because I was reading like in the manga it's like the story is credited by Code Zero 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 and I'm like okay does that mean like is this just simply like oh they created the series so they gotta yeah, get like because in a lot of adaptations like the original writer of the series gets credited as the writer even though they didn't actually write anything the artist does so I was like did they do anything or not and I'm like I'm pretty sure not but it's like yeah because I believe the director. Of uh, the, the the director of it is uh, uh, 
Atsuhishi uh, Nishigori, who he's done a bunch of like animation work on Gainax projects and uh, a couple other trigger projects. And the only other thing he's directed was Idol Master. So like that, that's oh. a big thing. That, oh, yeah, that's probably like the big <laughs> thing. And then yeah, so you you, you so the, uh, that's that's where a lot of like the relationship drama kind of comes in from. Yeah, and, and I mean, but I mean, it's, it's also before we get to like the ending stuff. It's also some of the best good like relationship drama. Yeah, it, it is definitely. It is definitely because it it, it it makes sense that they 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 got they had a guy who's worked with both Trigger and A One as their director. So they had like a, a uh, they they had someone as a good median, but it's like to be and he he he's also credited as one of the writers, but it's like again, I how how much like the who came up with the ending is something of a thing of like nobody really knows. So it really does feel like right. it, it really does feel like just a a thing of committee of like this is something like they didn't really plan out going in and they kind of just kind of scrolled. I I feel like it was almost a thing of like they got to like near the end of production and they're like shit, how do we end this? And they just kind of wrote some something they wrote something on 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 a piece of paper and just said just do this we got we got to get this done the trigger's like we got to get this done because we have grid man we got to get out we got to hurry up and make other animes and i feel that's also another part of like why we got what we got with darlings but i i do think it is very reductive to be that it was solely on one studio versus another it's like no guys if it's a collab it means equal responsibility equal glory yeah and and, and like i mentioned uh, at the same time uh, clover was also working on persona 5 the animation so they had that they had to juggle with and and well as well as also preparing for uh, rascal does not dream a bunny girl senpai so it's like uh, they they were they were basically struggling it feels like yeah they, they were trying to finish something while also working on another project and preparing for the next project so i mean it, it is kind of the thing with all yeah with most like japanese series i mean you, you see that in a lot of like the japanese uh the uh production thing of like just bam bam go 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 no time no time for any rest just pump everything out week by week and it's like some sometimes you see issues slip slip through the cracks and it feels like this was a case of just yeah just there wasn't enough there wasn't enough time to even with all the people involved there wasn't enough time to really get everything perfect which 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 right. which, which then kind of sucks because it's like it would have been so e- it's such an easy fix it's not like they kind of put themselves it's not like they put themselves into a corner that they couldn't get out they literally they, yeah. they, they didn't trap themselves into a corner they instead bought fireworks and flow and burst their way out when they could have walked through a door that was right there like that that, that, that is literally like my, my 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 metaphor of how they decided to end uh franks right it's so it's so weird so let's talk about how they end it then so we good we i i want to talk about the fr- the dr franks episode oh right oh i see i keep see it's funny because like with 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 the with the franks with the, the franks backstory episode is the episode that i see most people be like oh this is the one when it goes off the rails and i remember That's watch so- i remember watching it be like no. it was fine like i i didn't really see anything raw so i'm like okay i want to see like what what was the stuff that was like truly terrible because i remember watching it and being like it was fine like i didn't see anything like really like wrong with it like everything kind of like made sense it's like oh the klaxosaurs are like kind of like uh, the frank that's why the franks are like that and it's like oh the, 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 this is the year like the the you know, humanity was creating basically the elixir of immortality i'm like oh that kind of makes like everything kind of made sense to me and like what they were explaining I mean, kind of, sort of. So, like, again, a lot of people were drawing a lot of the comparisons between Darling and the Franks and Evangelion because, you know, you had post-apocalyptic world with monsters that children have to fight in robots, which, again, you can make anything reductive like that if you just break it down to, like, its main points. But um, when we get to the episode where Darling and the Franks explains its backstory, or tries to explain his backstory i think is definitely where the whole show starts to really fall apart like we don't go full wowie zowie like things are about to get crazy yes but i feel like the the episode where we kind of find out the history of the robots the history of the world and the collapsosaurs and we find out about all this stuff in one episode one episode gives us all of the backstory like that already should be like a red flag but um in, in terms of like the plot points hit it's it's true that like they're not that outlandish they're not going to be all that bad i feel the big thing that really throws 
me personally off about this whole episode about what happens to Darling and the Franks is uh, is it, a, a part of it is involves the time scale. Like you're shown the world of Darling and the Franks in the first episode and then for the whole first half as it's this world where – all of humanity is in these giant moving plantations. Like people don't even reproduce anymore. We're able to engineer like pseudo people, children. We're able to make giant fighty robots. Like not most of this would give the, like the, the impression that this is something that is a bit far in our sciencey technology. Like we're not making clone babies here in the next five years. But Darling and the Franks has this a backstory where it's like, yeah, but what if we were able to start making clone babies in five years? So you have this whole you, you base so you throughout the series you have Dr. Franks. And you're told that, you know, he's the guy who invented the Franks robot. And he's this old guy, he has a lot of robot y parts, so his age is pretty ambiguous. Like this could be a guy who is hundreds years old. We don't know. Like it's not delved into until you know we get to the backstory episode. Where we find out that Dr. Franks, first and foremost, he is an atheist. Because I think that's meant to be like his big flaw. Which is super weird again when we already have the big bad organization being led by a man called Papa. Who dresses very, I don't know, Pope-esque. So it's like, show, what, what, what's your message here? Like, What are you trying to say? But anyways, so you have Dr. Franks. He's an atheist, so it means he has no morals and has no value in human life. And he's very instrumental in um, after humans discover like the infinite energy potential of magma, of you know the magma from the core of our Earth, that we're able that we could inject it into us to basically slow and stop our aging process, making us immortal. Um, so he starts this whole research fund and we find out that ape like basically rose up through the ranks that because they were the company that allowed us to access magma energy naturally we also made them in charge of everything else in our lives and again this is all happening within 10 years kind of it's shown to us so fast that like even if they were meant to have this be like over an extended period of time it's not shown to us or portrayed to us as taking place over a long series of time rather like this is all happening over the course and span of one dude's life like before one dude was born and died he completely changed the course of human evolution um and then that's when the Klaxosaurus showed up that's when the robo dragon dinosaurs all started showing up to attack humanity so we had to in response make robots obviously to fight back and, you know, that's when we have the whole scene where the robot goes psycho crazy. Dr. Franks loses his wife. He's like, well, I don't want to be immortal, but what is immortality? Am I still human? Am I immortal? These are questions that he will not answer because he is far too busy experimenting on genetically engineered children. Way too busy. So we find out that like the humans moved to the plantation and that all of the humanity on the surface went away again really quickly like this shit just instantly starts happening and you basically get the entire setup of how you go from our modern day to the world of darling and the franks and again it, it could have worked better if this was something that was set you know thousands of years in the future if anything it would strengthen darling's plot already because again you have the adults the actual humans at this point where they don't they don't reproduce, they don't eat, they're just in, like, floaty tanks. And to me, I feel like you could have, it would have been a stronger, scarier outcome if this was something that was, like, natural to human evolution. Like, that because people had been living on the plantations for generations, that that's what had caused us, you know, like Wally. -E. The people weren't insta-fat. Like, that was something that occurred over a long period of time on humans versus darling and the franks tries to make it seem like magma technology just like instantly shifted everything and then we were no longer going to be making babies or living normal happy human lives 
And I know a part of that is meant to show that, like, you know, Ape got down to business, that once they were able to take control of, like, human resources, that they instantly made the push for, you know, this plantation, the plantation life, and and the rules that they have in place for the new humanity. And you get, again, all of this is explained in one episode. And it's, like, an episode out of nowhere, because, like, you know, we have... It's built up to this because this is right after Mitsuru and Kokoro's wedding gets, like, hijacked and arrested and thrown away. It's like, okay, but let's take a moment to explain the history of the world and how one atheist dude fucked it all up for all of us. Uh, and, yeah, so you kind of get and, – and it's not like it even adds more to it. It, it really just makes things more confusing and convoluted because, again – if they had just left how people ended up in the plantation to the imagination, most people, given the clues in the show itself, could, like, piece together what happened. But instead, Darling just decides, no, 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 no. What you think about is wrong. And in fact, this is all happening in, like, the span of 10 years. In the span of 20 years. It's like, goodness, Darling, you had a whole great world built up and you just decided to just smash it in one fail swoop. And, and again, that to me is where things get really bad for Darling and the Franks. Like, we haven't even talked about, like, you know, Verm and all the other shit. But, like, already in just the show trying to explain what it already has and fumbling it like this was already, like, my, like I, I couldn't have dropped Darling's hotter. I was watching it on release hour every week. And then we had the, 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 the Franks episode. I was like, oh. You know what? Never mind. I think we're good. I think we can wait for that next episode. So, I mean, what what did you think once they kind of explained where the giant Robo Girls came from? Yeah. See, maybe it's just because how they uh they like like a- a- executed it, but for some reason, like yeah, like, w- w- seeing you explain it is kind of like making me be like, yeah, it is kind of weird how it's like oh, like the 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 events. Like I feel like there is there is kind of like you you could make that kind of a funny twist in the end to basically be like oh yeah, you you think you think we're like hundreds of years in the future, but it's like no, it's maybe like a little under a hundred, and it's like I feel like there there is kind of a funny thing to be like oh, it is such a small time period in between when things because i think when, when, when does the flashback like the first flashback happens in like yeah because they time stamp it on years yeah, 2025 is when the flashback starts and like that, that, that that's when that's when you see like frank's like like being hired by ape and like doing the like starting like the process that leads to it and it's like i think yeah oh uh uh 2042 is when they meet the claxosaur princess and it's like Maybe another ten or twenty years. Yeah, so it's like it's like literally forty or fifty years. Like the the, the series takes place. It's yeah. not that big. And again, when the message of your show is to be that, like you know, humans should live like part of their lives naturally, and that a, an aspect of humanity is being like in touch with nature. Like I, I think it is super weird that on the show it's like, oh no, humanity stopped reproducing like on, on, at the drop of a hat, like dime, like it was an instant change i think maybe it's because in the back of my head i'm like if it would if it was open well see on, on one hand i was like thinking like if it, if it became accessible for literally anybody on the planet to become a mortal but they just can't have kids i feel like not every single person would do it as it's shown in the series because i mean like i mean we live in a world where people don't even want to take a free vaccine so i'm like yeah no shit yeah, no way they're gonna be like oh free immortality or it's like but there definitely would be like there definitely would be like a half that would take like there there, there is a it, it isn't like a like a super thing of like oh it wouldn't it wouldn't be this fast but it was a thing of like yeah no i could buy like a good chunk of the population would go into the whole yeah especially because like there are a lot of people like that are just like yeah like, we, we we don't want kids we don't care about kids but we would but we would definitely like take immortality so it's like I, I can see that but yeah and and i can understand how being like oh yeah once monsters emerge that you basically can't fight that the monsters would decimate the whole planet like immediately so it's like i feel like the the, the time scale it's funny when you think about it but like as it's like watching it i was like i didn't really think about it being like oh it, it was like oh it's completely uh uh 
completely like incomprehensible especially like in this world it's more so like like the actual like events that was kind of foretold i'm like yeah and like everything kind of made sense it wasn't something that it wasn't things that like blew my mind or things that kind of like retroactively it didn't really make things worse for me personally but it didn't like make things better it was just kind of like eh, okay the, the, the this explained things and now we can move on to now then we could i that was like oh we can hopefully move on to the good conclusion to this and yet darling decides after all that it's like no i'm not done i'm not done so at the end of the franks episode we find out that humanity had decided that we were going to go and see where were these claxosaurs coming from so like they they basically zone in on this area called the grand crevasse that has basically the leader of the claxosaurs there and so what happened the claxosaur queen the claxosaur queen claxosaur princess whatever but there's a whole scene and this is again where it's just the show like just throws these things at me that like i want to like be like you know that's just one mistake that's just one no 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 no. the show decides that it just wants to keep having mistakes i don't know why but we have this whole thing where dr franks goes to see the princess because he's like oh man i want to know the one who is uh you know, some all the class. I am horny as fuck. Really I am horny as fuck for this, for the, for for this, and for this lolly demon. Because he's horny as fuck for, for, for a lolly demon, and also for the lolly demon. So the Claxosaur princess pulls the whole. Oh no, it's an eight-year-old body, but she's actually a thousand thousand-year-old Earth inhabitant. <laughs> we'll get to that. We're about to get way off these rails. But anyway. The monsters have a leader, and the leader is a little lolly princess girl who just wants to eat humanity. And she rips Dr. Franks' arm right the fuck off the stump, and he's just sitting there bleeding, not to death, talking about... He's turned on by it. How infatuated he is. And again, this is the show that was like, you know, it has to be boys and girls, that gender fluidity is weird and should only be used for piloting a robot that you know boys can't pilot the robots with other boys girls just can't even get it to work with other girls but you want to know what's a deep and meaningful relationship a horny old scientist man and a thousand year old lolly demon child and like the show doesn't even like critically bat an eye that they just made a character like do this in this show because cause again that, that's well, my I, other I would say is like, I mean Frank's like Frank's isn't supposed to be like in the right here and it's like I mean like the it, Which is, it, it is weird no, cause the weird thing with Frank's is that because like he, he he's he's kind of treated as like yeah like the mystery kind of weird guy and then you find out that oh like then you find out that oh he he created Zero Two from uh the, the Claxor Queen's blood and it was like yeah it was a very kind of like not I wouldn't say border I wouldn't say abusive but it's like yeah it, it was it was a very fun up thing and he's like he's doing all these experiments because it's like oh he 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 is he is a not he is just as much in the bad as like papa and all them but then he kind of has like the weird like moment of being like oh he he helps zero two escape out of there and helps him and then there's a thing of like oh he was like oh maybe he was helping he was helping zero two reunite with hero the entire time but then in the end he has a death scene where he's like laughing maniacally and there's like a part where he's trying to get to the clack store queen because he wants to rebond with her and again and then his death scene is like treated as kind of a joke where he gets like crushed by rocks laughing maniacally so it's like okay is this character supposed to are we supposed to not like him or are we supposed to like like it and it's like it's because there are poor yeah there are ports where they're like yeah especially with like yeah with the clax everything with the claxor queen is like yeah then that that's him at his worst but then you get these little moments of being like oh he's doing a good thing but it's like and then it ends with him like at it again back at his worst so it's like is this just is this a commentary on the complexity of humanity and how sometimes just people are insane or whatever or is it just, just or, is it can, or is it or is it funky horny. writing which i'm probably gonna say that's funky writing probably but yeah so so the claxosaurs have a leader it's the claxosaur princess and you find out that she has a designation she is code zero zero one so you know it's not even like really explicitly like with zero zero two. It's explained that like no, she is zero zero two because she is a clone of this Claxosaur princess. Um, but it kind of like, it, it's not like explicitly said. But then by that extension, wouldn't all of the parasites' code designations be basically how similar they are to basically the Claxosaur princesses? 
genes or like her 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 DNA or whatever. But like it, it's kind of the whole reason why Hero being uh zero one uh six and Ichigo being zero one five, why they're kind of seen as like these stu- superstar kids is because since their numbers are and they mention like because they're only in the teens is to reflect that they are probably just very similar to the Klaxosaur princess. And I guess like that's the the goal of like the whole parasite program in general is not just to create enough kids to pilot the robots to keep humanity alive, but also in a goal to create a parasite that is very very similar to this princess because lo and behold this princess actually has access to secret earth weapon technology why because earth has been fighting a war and yes we know throughout this whole series there has been a war between humanity and the parasites using the franks to fight against the claxosaur robos that are just kind of all over the world that you believe are there because you know for maybe uh environmental reasons or if you know, it's your first trigger show. You're just watching them thinking, oh, they're just bad guys because they're bad guys who do bad things. It's like, oh, we're going to get rid of simple ideas like that out of your head real quick. And be, and, and it's because it's funny because they they, they, they have like so they have like a, a, a complex like set up right there that I actually do go for with it, which is the whole that. Oh, like, yeah, like the, the, the Klaxosaurs aren't completely the bad guys because it's like again like they're, they they're they're basically just fight they're, they're basically fighting back against humanity because humanity took their shit so it's like a thing of like oh you can see them as like oh yeah they're they are still technically like villains that they got to fight because yeah they're they're, they're all they're, they're all fighting for their lives so it's like of course they're going to fight back and the class store queen has got to the point where she's like oh yeah humanity's humanity suck humanity sucks so i'm gonna fight them and all that stuff but then you and so so you have that, that you have that the, that complexity of like yeah we got to fight them but it's also they do kind of have a point so it can and they actually do go for that so it have that there is like a that little bit of complexity that they do delve into but then they just kind of throw that out of the way by making the other threat as black and white as possible for literally no reason and then then ape shows up and we find out that you know subjugating humanity you know Fucking with the evolutionary history, producing literal, like, child soldiers that are just that, children and soldiers and nothing else. <laughs> and so, yeah, so you have the whole scene where they're going into the Klaxosaur Princess, Frank says his whole shit, and we're thinking, oh man, it's going to be a whole climactic battle between the Klaxosaurs and, and what remains of humanity for the future of Earth. And then the show decides, ha, no. See, okay, so I I have a thing right here. I I have like a bunch of notes that I've been like kind of doing of like checking off of like what I want to talk about. And one of the things I have written down is literally Psy Verm. Here we go. <sighs> the, 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 this is like this is despite where despite all of the weird sexy shit and despite just weird story structure shit, we have now reached the actual reason most people just are tired of darling in the place. Yeah, because th- this is what I'm going to vent about, because again, no matter how much I have, like, de- no matter how much I will defend, like, Frank, like, if I see people saying Frank's are Frank's bad, I'm going to be like, no, nah, Frank's isn't bad. There's still a lot of good stuff in there, but there there will be one thing that I will always b- b- g- growl with hatred and shit on for as much as possible is ver- be- it's so yeah again so the uh, the whole thing is that oh you you have papa and ape as these the clear clear main villains since they're the ones that caused this whole thing they're 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 tyrannical rule over the parasites they're the ones that caused the claxosaurs to attack in the first place so obviously it seems like the thing of like oh the the parasites and claxosaurs are gonna like end up teaming up to go and fight uh to fight ape and to, real yeah, to take to basically it, it's ba- basically a story it, it, it basically be a story of yeah the the, the next generation of human it's the millennials versus boomers of just finally putting those <laughs> old fucks in their place of being like you can't ruin our lives anymore we're gonna take over our destiny and how much cooler would it have been if it was gay millennials and being like and we're also gonna do it by piloting the robots the way you told us not to pilot the robots like you have it all set up. It's all there. It was go- like I, I, I wish it had happened. Is what I would like to say. But, but in for no re for honestly no real reason they were like actually Papa and Ape are aliens and actually they're not just aliens. They're the life fibers. 
And I don't mean that literally. <laughs> and I don't mean that literally as in oh, they're the life fibers, just like in Luluco. I mean no, they are just they are space parasites that came down to Earth to because are back like long long s- suddenly like with with three episodes left to go in the series, they're like oh. Thousands of years ago, Claxosaurs, which were like weird alien creatures, lived on the Earth, and the the Verm world showed up, and they're like, "Hey, you wanna you wanna uh, come and like basically live forever with humanity?" Like, no, not humanity. It's just, do you, hey, do you wanna live forever? And like, just all our souls will be connected. And they're like, "Now nah, we're good." So they're like, "Okay," and then they basically destroyed nearly all of them, forcing them underground, and then basically hid within humanity for as long as humanity grew with this basically long, long, like, thousand-year plan to essentially get revenge on the Claxosaurs for denying them. The, the main one took over Papa, and well, we either took over or was Papa the entire time, because they, have, was, yeah, because, because yeah. they, don't, they don't want to explain, and then, then it's like, yeah, so... Yeah, the, the, the verb, the verm. What it is, it is, it is the same thing. again. This is where I'm like, I feel like I, I'm gonna say this is probably my my biggest complaint with Trigger so far is that well, one thing I think is kind of cool about Trigger is that they kind of have a very consistent theme of uh, faith in humanity. Like they kind of have, they have this very strong like with with yeah. Kill a Kill, with Keys Niver, with Little Witch, with Franks. It's like Gurren Log yeah, and Gur- you'll, you'll, you'll get to that. Yeah, you'll they see that. they have a thing of like, oh, humanity is inherently good, and people will come together to do good and protect each other from bad. And it's like I think that is a genuine good message. I think the problem is that they this mess the way they inter- they do this message makes it feel like there is no such thing as bad humanity. There's only slightly astray humanity that can be that can be redeemed or can be talked down because because literally every time they have a threat like this, it can't be humans. Like you have Kill a Kill, where the whole thing is that oh, Sotsky isn't actually the bad guy. Uh, Ragio is, and Ragio, who is the capitalist uh, controlling over the world, isn't actually a person. She she she's an alien parasite. So it's like it, it it's not it's not her fault. It's it's the it's the parasite's fault. And then you get Kiesniver, where you have, like, a very human story, but it's like, oh, we can't really put the blame on any humans, because that kind of goes against our theme for whatever reason. So, oh, uh, Noriko didn't actually do anything wrong. And then you get Little Witch Academia, where you have a main villain who's kind of corrupted herself over greed and jealousy, but in the end, it's like, oh, she can't be the bad guy. It's like, oh, it's not her fault. And then they have to be like, okay, uh, they have to fight a missile with a face on it. And then now we get for- <laughs> the negative emotions of humanity. At least Little Wish like acknowledges that it's like it's negative human emotions. Like they don't try to be like, oh no, these were emotions from space. Yeah, but and then, and then it's like yeah, with Franks, it's like we can't have the we can't have the kids fight against the adults and like oppress because for some reason th- I guess that I guess that kind of defeats their human their faith in humanity because oh then that means that shows that though there are bad humans and we don't want to have this human human conflict so oh no the humans were actually space parasites the entire time and everything that's bad with the everything that's bad with the world is aliens fault like that it feels like that that's triggers mo is that humanity isn't humanity isn't fucked it's the aliens that are right am i out of touch no it's the aliens who are wrong we're just a we're just easily manipulated and, and coerced because like like you said you're right it, it does really tie into like triggers mentality and into their philosophy and their shows that you know, like you know the indomitable human spirit is that ultimate thing and like in shows like gurren Logan, it makes sense because it's meant to be because gurren Logan, and we'll get to it like it builds up to that. Like first, there is the, you know the the oppressors on the surface, and aliens become this oppressor from the stars. Like aliens, no matter what anyone wants to say and try to be uh, like play devil's advocate to it, like the aliens in Gurren Logan are not like out of nowhere. Like it's it's a very it, it it's a logical step up of what they're looking at in terms of like oppressive forces. Um, and then, like you said, then the other trigger shows just kind of have it as more of a force being a bad guy. Um, and like you said, with Darlings, it definitely feels it feels partially like they were doing it in the vein of tradition. Like, you know, kind of like, oh, well, we normally have the big bad aliens show up to challenge humanity. But it feels very much like this was not necessary for, for Darling and the Franks, especially when you know the the, the whole con- what the whole conflict is the fact that it it started with this conflict being over resources on earth about you know 
the land of the earth about you know the future of earth and so you know to have the aliens show up and then these aliens like you said they're very life fibery but they're also a little bit different like you know life fiber and um the anti-spiral it's all very much in line with you know evangelion's instrumentality you know they're meant to be this whole you know you can just let go you don't have to fight the current of life you can just go with the flow and just be part of a collective that is you know collectively doing its own thing you don't have to worry about you being yourself and your own individual but darlings takes it to that whole twist where um you know the verm aren't there to like you know recruit them via like anti spiral like be a part of us it's fully like discard your bodies it, it's meant to be this whole that you don't need to physically be around you don't need to have the joys of like your bodies and stuff and about physical contact and stuff like that that instead the the the, the preferred of of the universe is that you know dis- discard it just exist as one of, with the collective which is okay could have worked if it was like logically tied into like the messaging and the themes and like what was being set up throughout the rest of the show but instead it very much feels like aliens are there almost out of out of a contractual obligation that like well trigger has to have some aliens it's like but you don't need them you didn't need them and even if you did there would have been way better like messages way better like there, there, there could have been a much better conflict of ideology if you were going to do this. If you were going to have aliens, at least set it up. Don't have, don't have your main villain suddenly take off their mask and reveal that they were aliens the whole time three episodes before the ending. That's like the worst. I mean, it's already bad enough that they made them aliens, but the fact that there was no build up, like I'm, I'm pretty sure, like I was trying to look for it, but I didn't see any like foreshadowing in the previous like however many episodes of oh them actually being like not human and like oh them being this other thing everything you see of it is just oh these are these are <laughs> these are these are a, a a cult of assholes and it's like that that's all you need to know because that that's all that really matters but with, with, with the story that's being told because yeah it's a very clear story of kids it's a kids a kids versus adults story and the kids eventually rising up and taking down the adults that have been putting them down and forcing them to do to bend to their will the entire time and, and, and it, instead this, yeah and this could have been a story of like expression versus like subjugation or not subjugation but like you know the, the, those pressures the fact that like they are a religious government like the fact that the papa and ape in general are like they are every like institution to humanity now like it could have been this show of expression and like just pure adult innocence versus like those society constraints versus those rules and regulations in place like yeah then at that point you would have started getting like this is really similar to kill a kill but then you know you just would have had the arguments that's like just because it's the same themes doesn't mean it's ripping off. You, and, and, and the thing is, you can't even say that. And if you say that, oh, this this, this is this kind of like Kill a Kill. Franks does even like what Franks does makes it more like Kill a Kill than it would have if they didn't do that. That's the funny like and it, it, by, by throwing in the aliens. Yeah, yeah by throwing in the alien <laughs> and, oh, and it would have been so easy because it's like like you want to have like you want to have like it's literally like I, I can say it right here in like just a few sentences is a Papa and Ape escape escape onto their space station because they're like oh we we have we have all of the energy we need now we're gonna nuke the earth and kill everybody so the the parasites and the clactosaurs work the clactosaurs help the parasites get them all up in the space everybody fights like you have you can have a big giant space battle all in front of the all in front of the space station you could have maybe had you could have like the moment for the nines of the nines being conflicted of like do we follow papa or not and then maybe like have them sacrifice themselves in order to let the parasites free and then in the end you can have like zero two and hero if you want to have zero two and hero die together you can have them sacrifice their lives to baby like destroy the energy source and kill papa and all the rest of ape and it's like there you have that bittersweet ending of them both sacrificing themselves to save everybody else while also giving it a much more cohesive and simple ending while also doing again the whole 
the children the children are basically like they they fought for their freedom and they won their freedom and now they get their freedom by basically reclaiming the earth rebuilding up earth from scratch and you can have like that would be the, like you can have that be just the final episode of just them like just a very calming epilogue of just here we go rather than having the final two episodes be half uh p- the the people like trying to rebuild the earth and the other half being a quasi a dumb kind of a dumb kind of copy of Voices of a Distant Star because suddenly they're like <laughs> okay, they're like they're like okay we copy Trigger how about we copy some Makoto Shinkai we're gonna have we're gonna have, have we, to. we're yeah. gonna have some weird like oh the, the, the hero and Zero Two but, tra- but, but wait 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 but, but before we even get to like that it goes to space because you know, oh, we got to you know, we gotta get to the gotta other stupid space. but real quick other cause, stupid cause it doesn't even, thing it doesn't even go A to B we got a, we got a couple steps in the middle there where. Hum- the humans go to the Klaxosaur princess, all right? And then the Klaxosaur princess is like, oh, no, here comes Vern because Vern shows up. And so her plan and what I guess was the plan of her entire species is she hijacks Hero because I guess because he can sync with 002. And I guess it just stands to reason that he's the best suited to sync with 001 with, with who her blood is based off of. So she takes Hero and... And they unleash basically Earth's final Gambit cannon. It's a giant robot lady cannon. It looks super cool. Like it, it, it gives me it, it, it gives me like mega Digimon vibes entirely. And but what happens is, uh oh, Verm was ready for that plan with their own plan. So they decide to infect the Earth cannon, which includes. Klaxosaur Princess and Hero. So 002 has her moment because we've had already a couple where, you know, Hero is trying to get to 002. He's trying to like break through to her, his emotions, his intentions that I'm, I love you, that I'm not, I don't want to use you. You fully want to use me, but I, I'm not like that. So 002 has her moment where she has to get into the giant Oppos laser cannon to save her man from her original self. And she does. She makes it. They have a kissy face moment. It's all great. It's all good. And so Hero and 002 are able to to pilot the big lady cannon. But then the big lady cannon goes into space. And Hero gets left. And 02's body gets left so then you also have like the half episode where he's taking care of a comatose 002 and he's like i love her i need her i can't like not do this without her and you have this whole moment where he realizes that her soul is in space still fighting and he must also go to space to to also fight with her and leave everyone behind who who are also trying to figure out how corn works like because again the plantations don't work so they have to figure out how corn works and how to make themselves some more corn and hero's like i don't have time for that i gotta go to space for my waifu and everyone's like no but then everyone's like okay so then the show goes to space all right sorry i like i know it's like a picky point but it wasn't even just that and then they go into space after the the aliens like they had to have this whole like drama of literally a ghost in the shell like they literally had to put 002 soul in the robot yeah and and then it and then it gets yeah because it it wasn't it it wasn't like it would be bad enough if it wasn't just oh a very dumb dumb way to end your series and then they make it just flat out stupid by having them go up into space he rescues zero two by merging himself with the giant robot and then this is this is where like when when you're like this is where the whole thing of like the robots being girls kind of becomes a problem because Zero Two literally becomes a giant spaceship, and it looks it's fucking weird. Ship. And it looks fucking weird. And, and like they have her look like it's a, a whole wedding dress thing. Like she goes through a black hole, like with an aisle way. Like they fully do. Like this is her getting married, and like the culmination of everything in it with with her being in space. Because again, two boys can't pilot the robot, but you know who can pilot the robot? A boy and the tentacle robot remains of a girl. That's okay. But not two girls 
and not two boys. It can be a creepy pervy robo dude and like the thousand year old monster girl. That's fine. A boy and tentacle robo girl. That's fine. And so again, this is also where like, it just kind of irks me more that this was the show that, that had this be its message when it was set up so well to be about a message about expression and about acceptance and about, you know, a diversity of sexuality. And instead, no. And instead, it's about how love is between one boy and the soul of a girl in a giant space robot that is needed to take down a space virus. That's true love. It's like, okay, okay, sh- okay, darling. And, and then you say marriage, and it's like, and then they they have the worst marriage possible, which is literally just traveling in a straight line for five years until they eventually, yes, re- until they he- eventually reach a certain point where they're going to throw, where they're going to throw a bomb and probably die. And sure enough, yes, they do die. <laughs> Oops. Oops. Which, uh, Super totally, like, they were trying to gunbuster it up. Like, I recognize the reference. I don't know if anyone else, but it's very much the whole gunbuster, diebuster thing of, like, you know, they go to do their final battle in space, and then it just takes them forever to get back to Earth. But no, yeah, so you have the giant space robo waifu battle happening, which isn't even that. I don't know. Like, like. It's not. It's not engaging. It's no. It's not engaging. It isn't at even all, that cool. It, yeah. It, it, yeah. It, it, it doesn't. It doesn't even have like cool animation or anything. It, it's just like eh, it's okay. Or it's like fine. Like a gi- giant thing is fighting a bunch of stars in space. It's like you know whatever. And then meanwhile, the stuff on Earth just gets weird because you know Mitsuru and Kokoro have her child. Have the child, and Zero Two's body is like still on Earth, and it stones over. So. Their child, like, goes to the Zero Two statue and learns the word darling telepathically. So everyone on Earth decides to, like, sing sing the Whoville Christmas song and hold hands. And they send thoughts and prayers (laughs) to Hero and Zero Two, which, again, they're fighting Verm. We don't even know what that means, where that is, why they should, like, other than, you know, they want to take over Earth, which... No, that's bad. Earth Earth is for, for the future of humanity, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah. So, in Zero Two is in this giant white wedding dress spaceship form. Hero looks awful at the end of this show. He has horns growing out of his head because he's mixed with Zero Two's blood. Eventually, he gets this part where he just has, like, robo-tentacles, like, infused into his entire body. And he's like, yeah. This was the best outcome. He, Hero and Zero Two are pretty like the whole ending of is Hero and Zero is pretty much just like we just want to fucking die. Just let us die. It's like we need to do this <laughs> together. One thing. Yeah, we need to do this one thing and then let us both kill each other at the same time so that we can die. We can leave this world together. That's all that matters at this point because yeah, yeah, because like yeah, like but by that ending is like they're pretty much all they care about is just like yeah, I'm just being they, again. It, it's like the weird thing of like because they want to like have like the the relationship between the group and like everybody being together and being this one thing but it's also the thing of like oh hero and zero two and the the, them two all all that matters in the world is just them two being together and it's like they want to have it both ways they want to have it being like oh the connection between the whole parasites and then have the relationship between this hero and zero two be like this perfect special like like yeah destined by fate thing and it's like i feel like there could have been so much better way like again like 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 i said with my ideas that you can have them like being like instead of like it, it's it's very clear that from the very beginning like even though they keep saying that oh come back to us please come back to us it's clear that they're like now nah, we're we're going to kill each we're going to kill we're going to kill ourselves the moment the first moment we can whereas like say in like if they're fighting like if they're fighting like the, them like right above earth and it's like it's a very like hectic situation like they they could be put in a they could be put in a scenario where they can die together to save everybody and i feel like that would be like the best way of having it be like oh they the two of them get to be together and get what they want while also reaffirming their love and like desire for the best for all their friends i feel like that would be st- yeah, yeah that, that, that would like put make those two themes fit so much better than just oh <laughs> they they're they're trying their best to live before they die while everybody else is like come on do it be be be, be better and they're like okay we'll be better boom okay now let's now, let, now let's turn <laughs> into now up. let's turn Thank- into little spirits that fly off into the sunset 
Even though I will, Thankfully. even though I will say that we yeah, have like that, even like again, all of that that craziness is just kind of like kind of head headache inducing. Like the moment, like when they die and their their two spirits like fade away, like you see them and then they turn into the spirits. Like I, I honestly did kind of get choked up by that. Just like seeing them, like just become be basically become spirits and just like the whole idea of like oh like the their love like just even like the, the just like the fact that it, it, it which it. it it, 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 it's pretty much just like a a, a a testament on like how good uh, like the rest of the series did on handling their relationship is that yeah like you want them to be happy and just after all that pain that they dealt with just this one this moment in death when they're happy just has this bittersweet moment and it's just like it's just like kind of it, it, you feel but especially when like yeah hero is like now become like all completely blue i mean again like the symbolism of like zero two being all red and hero being all blue just like the two openings and it's like all that matters is just all that matters that now they're happy and they can be at peace and it's like just 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 that kind of like yeah it gave me it gave me it gave me like it it, 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 it gave me the choked up feels oh i mean like even though the ending reeks of like oh we're just doing our trigger ending i do appreciate that uh Technically, Darling in the Franks does not pull an essay too, because that would have been really unfortunate to be just like sitting there watching this and then Kiss of Death shows up while they try to do like a super attack. Thankfully, Kiss of Death does not show up like while they're trying to do a super attack. They do do a super attack, and you know you have that whole moment where like their their love takes out Verm. But <laughs> I do love how even though we are going full rippy offy and just doing the same ending again that. We do not have to talk about the worst SA2 moment that we can just skip over that. We'll get back to that on another trigger anime. They do continue to happen. Thankfully, not in this show, though. <laughs> like they do, they do play a song and there is a final attack, but I'm just glad it's not all the points of a <laughs> of an SA2 yeah, ending. Yeah, but, well, I mean, they, they technically do kind of have the SA2 ending, but instead of Shadow dying, it's Sonic and Shadow dying together. They both die together because they're boyfriends. <laughs> but yeah, and I do, I do like everything, like all of the epilogue stuff af- after they die, all of the epilogue stuff, like the rest of the final episode, I think is genuinely really good. Like I like seeing like everybody kind of get their happy, everybody kind of get, get their happy ending. You see like everybody kind of reclaim, like the earth kind of being rebuilt and you get, you get, you get, you get that 10 year, like in the future thing of seeing everybody with their families, like the, them, them all, them all are, like starting up a school to teach new kids. And it's like, I, I like how like they've like set up the world and like how, like how they basically, they, 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 they've kind of taken charge and like right, right, rebuild built the world for the better and then you have that kind of like the final coda of thousands of year in the future uh hero and zero two souls reunite as two random kids and it's like oh that's that's sweet it's like and again like you could have had that whole like oh all of that stuff at the end you could have had in that ending where they fight papa and ape as adults but yeah it's like there really is no reason and no good thematic reason why they needed to be aliens yeah and I mean, and, and also I, I like the whole scene again with the hero and zero two souls coming back to earth to be reincarnated. Cause again, like I love that it's a gunbuster reference. I all, I like just, especially to a reference to the ending. Like if you, if you can bring me back to the ending of gunbuster, die buster and make me feel and make me emotionally resonate with that. Then like, even if I'm mad at it, like even with this ending, I still was like, Oh, it's it's sweet it's 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 i recognize it i pointed at the screen and it was sweet and cute but again it also just it just kind of makes me question is like well what what was the point like what was it that like zero two and hero had that like what about like their love was in basically what what was it at in contrast to and how was it better than you know the bodiless collectiveness like yeah and, 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 and again that 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 is the big that that is kind of like the big thing of like yeah if they were given a more kind of subdued death then it could be like oh yeah their 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 love mattered and it's like they deserve to have like another chance but rather than it being like oh these two are like use like yeah they, these two their love is superior to everybody else's love and it's like that 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 side of it i didn't really care for it's, it's more so like yeah like the, these two people just happen to find each other and they just 
happened to develop a connection, just happened to feel things for each other, and then that lead. So yeah, it, it makes the endings feel like the ending and looking at it that way makes it feel like again, like given these given these two kids a chance to love again, rather than being like they're destined to always be together by the the red string of faith and fate. I'm like, oh, <laughs> that's that's like yeah, I don't know. Like, again, the, 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 they're going a bit. The, it's them trying to go like a bit too broad when again being simp being simple would have been so much more thematically relevant and interesting and and again too especially where where again this show hard turns into the moral message or whatever being that like you know our ability to pro- to procreate is a good thing and is a thing that like will help us rise above alien viruses whatever but like it was it wasn't even that like hero and zero two were able to have a child. Like maybe if like they did like some weird thing where like it was their kid that was able to like be the X factor in their victory over Verm, like then yeah, well then it would have tied into your messaging, but it literally isn't. It's literally just the fact that hero and zero two were able to pilot together. Like it's not even specifically like again with, with Kokoro and Mitsuru where like the actual like, making of the next generation like that was that had nothing to do with them finding the virus it had nothing yeah it, it really sh- i mean it, 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 it's almost there but it feels like the it, it, the, the the message should be like love is unpredictable because it's, again, it's simply yeah, because yeah, like it's simple of like oh yeah, like like the whole thing that we mentioned with 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 Ichigo is that Ichigo thinks that oh she should be with she should be with uh, Hiro because she was with Hiro the longest, so she has these feelings for it, so automatically that means that she deserves him. But it's like oh Hiro doesn't feel the exact same way as her, so and he he just he just happens to feel this way for Zero too. It's like the the, the two just happened like when, even when we were kids, they happened to yeah. bump into each other, they happened to develop the, this connection, this like. The, 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 this this attract yeah so it's and it's like I feel like again with with they're they're pulled apart and they come back together again all by basically by chance so and then you, you see that with all the other kids like all the other kids pretty much they don't know like I mean they're they're forced together in like specific situations and it's like we don't know like how they're gonna feel about each other like who's gonna develop what relationship and you see it they were assigned yes yeah, so yeah they were literally mathematically assigned to each other that's why I think it would be even more powerful again if instead of just you know here and zero two being the ultimate robu waifu love pair match like if you had all the parasites but the parasites were all in different teams other than like their papa assigned one like one of the franks being piloted by a girl girl team one having a boy boy team and that way again then you do have your message that like humanity and it's weird different ways of interacting and making partnerships that that is more powerful than a like a bodiless homogeny like then you would actually have two different things then you would actually have a conflict then maybe the aliens would like have meant something like that's again like if you want to throw aliens in your last three minutes that's cool whatever like gurren logging does it but the aliens in there represent like stagnation in opposition to the the show's theme of like progress of of spirit of always striving the aliens were to represent again the anti spiral they were meant to be the opposite of that verm is just verm verm just exists verm has their goal of like take your bodies throw them away be one with us but in what for, for what reason they don't even not even within the show or do they do it as like a whole like it's because we're better or this way is a better way of existing like no it's literally just they have it and it's not what hero and zero two want it's like okay but, but like, why? We, we, we don't yeah we we, 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 we don't we don't want to have human we don't want to have we for some reason we are so averse to having humans be the bad guys and be unequivocally evil because again again not everything in the world is black and white there's there are lots of shades of gray but there are many instances where things are purely black and it's like there are there are people and organizations and cults like Papa and like uh ape that exist that are just plainly evil and it's like that need to go down that need it's like yeah like the, the nines are the gray it's like uh like those are the ones that are like the they're put on a certain path because they believe that this is our path this is what we this is what we're supposed to do so all of their bad actions kind of feel like yeah they're much more conflict they're much more complicated because they're they're doing what they think they're believing even though and because that's that's all they've been like their whole life and then you have people then yeah then you have people that are responsible like ape 
And it's like, there are people like that that exist in the world and people that you should rebel against and take down and yeah, can t- take your own life. Like, it, it's, 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 it's supposed to be fighting. It's, I mean, even, even with the Verm, like the whole thing with the Verm is like, yeah, sub subjugating to become one. So it's like everybody fighting for their freedom, but it's like, you're fighting for your freedom if you were going to fight ape to begin with. So what is this, what is this like main other than making it again, making it more black, making it more like, more, like reversing black and white of like, oh, like humanity is all of humanity is purely white. And it's the other, the aliens that are the pure black. And it's like hum, humans can't be black and white. And it's like, yeah, and it's just, it's, 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 it just kind of yeah. bugs, especially because again, and I haven't seen Promare, but just from what I hear of Promare, it sounds like it kind of does that. And I know when we'll get to it, when we talk about Gridman, I know Gridman does that again. And it makes me even more nervous for BNA because I'm like, isn't BNA kind of like a show about racism without any aliens? So I'm like, what the fuck are they going to, I'm like, what are they going to do with that? Like, it's literally a series like about, like a f- kind of about racism. So how are you going to do that without like make, how, what are you going to like actually go through it and make a complex like uh, conflict or is it just going to be... Uh, again, like just a ra- a random like outside monster that is that is the true villain, and it's like oh the people are good, and it's like oh, that's why I'm well because it also show also shows like the aliens as a crutch, and, like it is easier to then instead of making one of your characters like be bad, like is that you can just oh no, and then the aliens show up and they were the bad ones all <laughs> along, like because even like even Claxus or Princess she becomes absolved of any like plot relevance or responsibility because oh no everything she did was because space virus space virus was showing up and and you didn't know about it and we're actually on cycles of which species exist on earth and yada 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 and oh yeah then there's also the just the random twist too that like the franks are just a specialized claxosaur and like it's there and they try to do the whole like oh this is affecting the the pilots but then like it affects them for like less than half an episode like they don't even care and it's also revealed way too late i feel like you could have done like with that twist a bit sooner like probably when like we didn't have all the information about what the claxosaurs are like if it was probably shown like more when like they were dead hard set on like being the the environmental villain then it would have been kind of interesting then like you know you would have that twist of like you know using the tools that you fight against itself to like help yourself but not even to help yourself to help the other humans the real ones like it's it's super cool like you, you get these weird like proxy war ideas it's kind of it's kind of like with like a near automata you have all these characters fighting for humanity when not a single one of them is an actual human it's like y'all are fighting over the idea of what humanity is yeah it's like the the, the, the claxosaurs are sp- like i mean uh uh I just, I just, I just watched uh, Nausicaa, The Valley of the Wind for the first time recently. Mm-hmm. And it's like, yeah, like the Claxosaurs gave me like very big, like, like, uh, uh, the ohms, which are like the big bug creatures in uh, Nausicaa, because just the whole thing of like, oh, like they're, they're kind of seen as like the big bad because they're they're the dangerous monsters, and it's like if you get in their way, you're like you you have to fight back or else you're gonna die. But this also thing of like, oh, they're just kind of fighting back against uh, like the environmental dangers that humanity caused. So it's a thing of like, oh, they're they're pretty they're pretty much just they, I mean they're animals, but it's like they're animals defending themselves. So it's like. They're- yeah. They're, they're the planet's white blood cells like it's the planet's immune system and can you really be mad at your home like defending itself like even if it cre- it's by creating giant monsters that eat yeah, the, 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 like let's be fair the claxosaurs is like the complex villain that i actually like i was glad where they went yeah, again when i was watching it i was like okay and i was like all right so the whole thing is like the, the whole reason the claxosaurs are attacking is because of what ape was doing is that they, they took the resources and they fought back so it's like we're as i was like e- 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 either yeah either this ends with them just fighting them because they're monsters and it's whatever or it ends with them being like oh like it's kind 
of not exactly their fault. And so, you, yeah, again, you have the thing of like, yeah, the, the Clax are queen, they're fighting back, and then the hero fights back, and then they're like, oh, the, so she she ends up basically, yeah, she she effectively kills herself to basically give them the power to fight back against the Verm, and then the rest of the Clax stores end up helping them kind of travel to go face off against them. So again, they do have the whole thing of like, oh yeah, they recognize, like the, the parasites and the Clax stores recognizes that, oh yeah, we aren't and like we may be fighting each other for our lives but we aren't actually enemies and they figure they realize who the real enemy is and again like you could have also had still had that if it was ape and not the verm it's like all all that matters was that yeah like the these creature these creatures were being like you, you yeah. had it set up that society and like institutions were the bad guy and that's great like we love when animes do that like it's, it's the whole reason we, we love watching the rose bride fights but and, and, and this was a point you made I, i'm sorry to take it but like i think this was the best was that it feels a lot like that they had set up a story to where you know the institutions our government like those were meant to be set up as like the bad guy and then it just feels like they got so far into the show that they were like, oh, wait, we can't have that be the bad guy for whatever reason. My suspicions are still on to the fact that, you know, the government, the Japanese government decided to directly influence this show again to steer it more towards that, you know, help combat population decline. Shinzo like Abe! Fucking Abe. Like, <laughs> it, of, of all the shows, why did you think, like, touching up an anime was going to be the way you were going to get nerds to have babies like what made this seem like it was going to be a good idea instead all you did was just ruin a regular uh, ruin a good anime like and then and, and, like i i don't it didn't even make me want to have a baby at all if anything y'all fucked it up and now i want to have kids even less but uh but i feel like it may have been around that type like when that influence started taking hold of the show was when they realized oh we can't have the government or we can't have the the status quo in our institutions be the bad guy because uh that's what we depend on so it feels like it, it needed to be that hardline shift to aliens because like you said they, they're 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 basically the video game zombies of anime like it's a easy like low risk bad guy like you can have them be the ultimate antithesis to just humanity's existence the fact that they just don't want humans to exist like it makes them an easy bad guy like you don't even have to worry about their motivations you don't even have to worry about why if you know they just don't like our rock and they want all of us off of it so it, it definitely feels a lot like that that like they, they were looking for you know institutions and like all these things to be the actual bad guy and then it just it couldn't be it had to be evil space virus because evil space viruses are bad like they're there's, we don't have evil space viruses. It, it, it is so funny because I remember like when yeah when I first watched Kill a Kill long ago before watching. I mean, I had seen Frank's but I know, oh, I know. oh, let's get to this because this is why we had this entire series made up. Is I wanted to hear like this type of reflection. Yeah, no, yeah, you be yeah because like I had seen Frank, like I had already seen Frank's by then, but it had been so long since I had seen Frank, so I forgot. I forgot pretty much every like I forgotten like most. I, I remembered all the good stuff, and I remembered oh, I remembered oh. <gasps> Zero Tier turns into a giant, like, ship, and that was stupid. And so I, I kind of forgot about, like, the... Ver I forgot how the Verm, like, actually paid into, like, play. So I remember, like, when I was, like, when we talked about uh, Kill a Kill, I was like, you know, it kind of feels weird that they have, like, the evil capitalist, but she's basically just, like, a a, 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 a humanized space parasite. So I'm like, it is kind of weird because, like, it kind of takes away some of the the metaphor and, the, like, the symbolism. Like, I'm not, the, the, not, not, not symbol, like, the, the commentary and, like, the metaphor and all that stuff. But I'm also like, but I, I was like, like, it still makes sense because there is still there is still commentary in there and the life fibers were obviously set up from the beginning so it not it wouldn't seem like an ass pull but i was like it, it was funny seeing me like co commentate and criticize that in a way and then now we get to franks and it's like it is the most extreme version of that of like this whole kind of scapegoat villain the absolute worst and then yeah when, when, when you see next again this is it's very gonna be a second part once you see the second part when we talk about Gridman, they can they do it again not as bad as frank's but they still do it they, they still can't deal with 
the idea, they still haven't found out a way of just having a human villain, of like letting a human be the bad guy that needs to be taken down. And I'm like, I just find that so fascinating about Trigger. And I'm just like, I want to know, like, if there's anything that I can honestly ask Trigger, I want to ask him about this. Is like, what is your fascination with not being able to have human villains? And it's like, yeah, I wonder how, the, I mean, there's only so much that there, uh, I wonder if there's any more that we have to say, because I feel like there's so, there's only so many ways that we can say verm bad, babies bad. Because I, like we, we, I feel like we've said it, said it like, and literally as many times as you possibly can. Right, like, make, let, let the girls kiss in the robot, and that too, like, just let them kiss, let them kiss in the robot, and let that make the robot move, like, I would be so down in fact it would that would be i always i tell people like as a joke that if i ever had infinite just like magic money i would remake darling in the franks like i would get my own crew together be like we are doing this but we're doing it different and just make it unapologetically gay make it as gay as possible like keep the same setup keep it so that papa and ape are telling all of these children that they have to pilot the robot one boy one girl and then have the kids be like but what if we and then they start doing it and then they start finding out that oh shit ape and papa are fucking liars yeah to bring up what you said because it was something that we mentioned before is that I haven't, I hadn't got a chance to read the entire thing, but I was, because the, 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 there, there is a manga for Darling in the Franks, and I was incredibly curious to mm-hmm. be like, okay, did they do something? Did they, did they change up the end day? So I didn't read the whole thing, so I only read like the, the final couple chapters, and they did change, like, so they, they, they changed the ending, not in the way I wish they did, but in a better way, technically. Yeah. It's, it, it, it gives you a halfway. It's not really a good ending, but it's still better than the ending we get in the actual anime uh, i believe because i kind of skimmed through it uh there's they're still ver- uh, technically uh papa and ape are verm but verm isn't like it's like it gets very briefly mentioned that they're verm but then like nothing comes of it they, they they just they just end up disappearing and like nothing matter so like so like the actual villain like the final villain uh the boss the final boss of frank's is the claxor queen and it's like it's it's because it's in it, it, it with the way the story is structured in this is that they they it isn't law like it, it's not like they just took the whole series and then changed the ending it's like they actually did restructure the whole thing so like the series ends with yeah. hero and zero two having their big like their big reunion that happens in episode 15 so it's like it is like it, they changed like, up a lot of it and like yeah like the way the the ending is like the it, it, it's 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 the whole it's the whole like uh cl- the claxor queen being like humanity sucks and i'm gonna destroy it and zero two is like no there's actually good in humanity we have to just believe in it and then her and hero <laughs> they're sexy i like piloting robots yeah with and then them. her and hero her and uh, her and hero basically just uh, they they rebel against the claxor queen law lo- like basically long enough for her to be like Okay, I'll, I'll I'll let you guys deal with it, and then she she kills herself, and then they're like, okay, they they reun they reunite, the Claxors go back down to the earth, and they do the whole thing of like, oh, and when so now it's like, oh, now the parasites are all back to fixing the earth, and like, oh, we promise never to take uh, the energy from the earth ever again, and it's like, so it's a very quick and it's a very quick and like. Uh, ending where it's like yeah it it, it doesn't have it, it's not really like super satisfying it doesn't have like again like the papa ape uh uh confrontation that we wish it had but it doesn't have like the stupid like overly dramatic overly like x ex- like excessive uh verm ending it's just oh it just oh everybody true, gets to- true love doesn't fire a space laser instead it's yeah instead it's just everybody gets to live on earth happily that's it. And it's like, you know what? That it, it, It's not... The, it, it, do you have the good and bad ending? This is the alright ending. Eh. It's like, everyone gets to, to live a happy ending except Dr. Franks. He gets nuked in, in the morning as well. <laughs> good. Like, he still need. Th- we still need to get that man out of this pic- out of the picture. Like, regardless of what ending, it's like, just gotta get rid of fucking Franks. Bro. I do at least want to ch- actually check out the whole manga because it's... it's Drawn and I assume written by uh, the artist uh, behind To Love Rue. 
<laughs> and I've become a massive to love Rue. Like to love Rue is like now one of my biggest Aww. guilty pleasures. And I'm just like, I really like that art style. So I'm like, yeah, I'm like just seeing all the characters in like, like drawn, like though those characters is going to be really funny and weird, especially because again, like, like Ichigo has lots of Haruna in her. Like I said, with on yeah, even more like Haruna. And it's like, yeah, that, that, that is yeah, like, I was gonna say, weird. Uh, w- one thing about the manga for warning, titties way more oh titties yep it, it, it yep it is the two love room guy like, yeah uh, it's the two love room the, guy. the econo scene the econo scene is changed from a bedroom to uh in the shower so uh lots lots of way more titties than like there was and to, if you've seen the anime at first you may even be like wow this is an excessive amount of titties Oh, oh, yeah, and and, and the, the the main like then the other main girl is, is an alien. The other main girl is an alien with weird with weird stuff on her. So it's like, yeah, but again, yeah, it, it makes it, uh, in retrospect, it makes perfect sense for the two lover guy to to do it. Yeah. But it's like, yeah. The only other thing I have on my thing is just oh, talking about some of the the, the voice acting because it's like, yeah, I I, I had yeah. seen uh, uh, it's a good it's a good cast. It's a very uh, again, despite all of our of our discussions on the plot and how how bad that plot goes in terms of like production darling's in, darling in the franks is a solid solid production at least yeah it, 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 it's, it's been a while like because i watched the sub when it first came out so it's been a while since i actually like gone through and watched that but i remember like, even back then and thinking about it now it was like uh uh who's uh what's her uh Haruka Haruka Tomatsu's performance as Zero Two is top notch. It's like yeah, it, it's. The, I always remember. I I I know I know because it's it's a it's a awesome as VA. So it's like I knew I always remember it as as being her. And it's like yeah, like her she she yeah, she like her like I mean everybody like always mentions like the way she says darling and all that stuff. It, it it is so iconic at this point. And it's like yeah, just you you hear, which I mean I mean like especially because like I've been watching I've been watching and reading lots of Yurusei Yatsura uh, lately. So it's like yeah, it's like. Darling, Darling, and it, 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 it all comes back to it all comes back to Lum, like the OG alien waifu. So it's like you, you see, you see, <laughs> you, yeah, you see, you have like that performance. I think that performance is like is great. Like between like when she plays, yeah, like the the, the seductress, manipulative side to the, like the emotional scenes. I was very curious to see the like see it in English finally because I knew Tia Ballard uh, played Zero Two, which I was really surprised because she normally plays very like high pitched squeaky voices. So I was like, I was really True. really like, and but, but she she ended up doing like a like a surprisingly like excellent job uh, with Zero Two. Like it matched like the, the the Japanese performance was already excellent, and she managed to, like yeah to, to keep up with that and make a great. I believe she even like she won like oh like it was like the the best like the best. Uh, English voice uh, of the year, and I think that she was voted for that. I'm like, yeah, that 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 that, 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 that oh, makes yeah. sense. Like, I think that uh, that definitely fits. Uh, Heroes vo- Heroes VA, I thought was Josh Grell the whole th- for like half of the time because it's like it sounds so much like Josh Grell of like very generic, like the very simple generic uh, anime protagonist voice. But it, it wasn't. It was Matt Shipman. But like he he's doing a very like Grell esque voice. Which is funny because, uh, was it the main dude of the other, the other group of parasites that they meet, uh, the main dude of that is played by Josh Grell. So when I actually hear him, I'm like, oh god, it's other, it's the other anime protag voice. <laughs> He's actually the protag of another anime. It's like, the, it's all in universe. Yeah, and then you have, like, Austin Tyndall as, uh as uh what was uh, as goro yeah he he's really he's always good he's always good in a lot of he's always good in a lot of things i think yeah, he does another great job with that uh i thought that uh zorome was played by Mineta's voice actor because it's it sounded so I mean, much like meta yeah it sounds sound so much like meta but it wasn't but what's funny is that it's it's playing by it's a funimation va named ryan reynolds and she, <gasps> she, she she's a yeah because she, she she's been in like a bunch of like uh uh, like Funimation project where she she plays the same character of like a boy a like a tomboyish like type guy so it's like it's funny seeing like oh yeah she she always plays those roles and the fact that she has the Ryan Reynolds name is just really funny that is and hilarious, then actually. uh, uh <laughs> Ikono uh I really uh I, I, I keep calling her Kobayashi because she's played by uh Leah Clark who's uh Kobayashi's uh VA and it's like she 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 has uh... the glasses she has I mean 
Kobayashi's quasi lesbian and Ikino's full lesbian. So I'm like, she, there's a, there was just a lot of like when I when I when I forgot her name, I just kept calling her Kobayashi. Yeah, and she's she's really good, especially especially in her coming out scene. It's like that that scene is I've I've, wa- I've watched that in English so many times. That one's such a really good. And then they they they, they had a good use of Chris Sabat. And then ruined it by just with with with, uh, with Papa because it's like oh like hearing hearing him as like Papa for most of the series it's like oh yeah good use of your Chris Sabat and then when they- and he works like like the character of Papa like pre like Vermness like to me I was like man this is an interesting just like villain yeah because like they they really could have set it up to where you know Papa's motivation could have been like oh this is for the preservation of humanity or like this is necessary like it could have been this whole debate on like 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 the purpose of sex like again if we're going to have sex in the robot let's talk about sex let's talk about like how much of it needs to be about making babies versus connecting people versus just a physical thing like we could like it could have been like a look at like the purposes of sex in our society and like papa could have like been this whole outline where like this is why there needed to be structured rules and there needed to be complete control and this was our only option you could have like made this very like engaging like especially since you spent 15 episodes building up these ideas and these themes and you have this bat and you have this again you you set them up from the first episode like you have the whole wedding initiation y scene where like they show that the papa there was only a hologram as well like they set up all of these neat things about this power structure and it's like oh no no it, it meant nothing it was all just a facade which i mean i guess can tie it into like more reality you know nothing really matters but like yeah the fact that the two leaders of of ape just turn into a space parasite which in the manga they show up and they do the whole like two mass cross so like the the thing that they use to show verm is in the manga but it literally just they do that as like a ghost it's more like this is what we really intended. Peace, bye, and then they yeah, leave, they leave. But like... <laughs> yeah, but and the, yeah, it, 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 it's mostly just because like yeah, when when Papa becomes the head of Verm, it's like like so so it, it, it's more so just like it's it's not really a problem with Sabat's performance, just that like, he has very bad mm-hmm. generic dialogue and his voice is very. <laughs> then they change what he has, and to his say. voice is very very filtered. Where it's like you you can you can hear it, you can you can you can tell it's him, but it's like it's very filtered to the point where it's like. I mean, like theoretically, you probably could have just gotten anybody at that point. So, but it's like, yeah. So it's like, it's like good use of your sabot at first, and then, yeah, and then you just you just kind of threw it off. Me. Yeah. Right. Right. But yeah. Like the, 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 the those are those are probably like the, the those are those are like the highlight. V like all the other VAs do like a really good job. I mean, like it, it, they're yeah, pretty much all of like pretty much all of like the trigger like uh dubs have all been like really good so it's like it's mostly just like oh the, the, the those are the names i recognize the most and i think did like the like the highlight uh like the best job i uh, just wanted to mention and this one like darling the prince has no bad performances like even down to like the the other sad parasites or like the old lady human that zorome meets or like the uh the, the, the ladies that work in the garden. Like, there's a bunch of, like, side characters that are just there, you know, to interact with the parasites and answer their questions and stuff. But, like, there there's no... Like, all of the performances are so good in, in this in this show. Japanese and English are pretty good. Uh, one thing I do appreciate in the English, though, was that when I originally watched Darling in the Franks, I watched it in the Japanese. And so, you know, you have a lot of the, uh, the very poetry moments, you know, the parts where Hero is lamenting about the genre or when they talk about when they're talking about uh, what happens in the storybook. Um, I felt a lot of that, like, kind of got lost on me in, in, in trying to read Japanese while hearing or trying to read the English while listening to the Japanese versus when it's it was just all english it was like okay i kind of understand now what they're why they keep going back to these these certain uh symbols and these certain themes i mean it, it kind of adds to the artsy feel of of like the beginning half of this show but um i think it works i, I think again if if all of these messages and themes had been used in place in services of something i feel meaningful and, and not just a, a message to remind everyone to have babies then i think you know just the idea of like the the two birds who need each other to fly like that could have landed a lot more successfully than than how it does in 
the show we have now. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I did like the use of like the, the 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 whole like the obvious symbolism that they did like right at the beginning of the series of the whole like oh like the the bird that needs two birds in order to fly and it's like oh you you just the the, the whole desire the the whole like de- the, connecting the whole desire for a partner with the desire to exist and so you kind of have like they with the series kind of like tries to question of like oh what it like oh, can they be connected can they be separate like how much of each do you need to have and it's like yeah, exploring exploring these feelings in people who are experiencing fe- as like exper- experiencing complex feelings in people who are f- who are experiencing feelings for the first time for the first time my dude and that's i don't know like i said like i thought it was really interesting i thought they had themselves set up like they're the, like the themes and the way that like this could reference something in real life was just lining up so well for me that that's why like i really thought we were gonna get something that hit it like way out of the park but we had we had to wait for for the next trigger show for trigger to save anime unfortunately uh darling was not a show that saved anime unfortunately yeah ultimately darling is a series where it's I, I again I, I I feel like the the good is still I I, I think the, ultimately what I believe is that I, despite everything that I disliked about the ending surprise like because I mean there are series where the ending completely ruins everything about like the beginning or something but I I do think that the stuff that's bad wonder egg <laughs> what? sorry the stu- sorry the stuff that's bad is like I wouldn't say soak disconnected but disconnected enough that I can still take everything that I loved about the series, especially, like, yeah, that first 18 or however many episodes, and, like, genuinely, I I can go back to them and, like, watch, like, several, like, my favorite moments and parts like that and still be genuinely, like, invested and, like, being like, oh, I think these parts are, like, genuinely well done, and uh, if if they would have stuck the landing, it might have been Trigger's second best, like, at least to me, like, second best project. This could have been so good. Like, this could... They could have made a super gay robot show, and this would have been, like, my new favorite robot, because it would have been, like, it, it's, like, all your favorite anime robots and mangas and stuff, but they made it super gay and put it in service of a message of overthrowing oppressive, like, societies, but no... Instead, this is a show about how the space virus might make you want to take your wiener off, but you shouldn't. Your wiener is very important because you can use it to make babies. Again, like, it, it, okay, again, it, it, it should have been the Evangelion AU where Shinzi finally says "fuck this noise," beats the shit out of beats the shit out of their dad, and finally comes out as gay or non-binary, whatever they feel like, whatever they're most comfortable with. Right? It's like right? it should have been just like, this. It's yeah. all I need from my anime, guys. Like it's not difficult. Yeah, so like uh, uh, for for Frank, it's kind of a thing where I'm like, e- even though I still like, I I would say I really like most of it, and I wouldn't I'm I, I wouldn't go far to say like oh it's overall bad. I don't know if I would like r- like recommend this to everybody. It's more so a thing of like if if you if you see the if you know like what this kind of series is and you're interested in it, I do think it's worth checking out at least, even despite like where it turns out. I think it's worth checking out if you're interested in like romantic romantic comedy slash dramas and like mech stuff if you're interested in that i think it's worth checking out no matter like where the bumps may be if you're not if you're not interested in that then i'd say unless you're a trigger completionist i would say and eh, you, you don't need it even despite like what i love about it you don't need to uh go out of your way uh for that's true um no i this is kind of one of my issues when we before we were even doing this part was um I don't like this show. I'm sorry. Like, there are things about this show that I will gush to death. That, again, that I think could have been some of the most brilliant ideas and concepts and could have been used, like, so effectively. Like, this show could have explored and touched so many things. And then just, yet it doesn't. And I do understand that a lot of, like, the fact that this show isn't more gay is, is a very personal gripe. Like, I can't... I shouldn't judge a media by not like meeting my expectations in terms of openness, especially like I know a show that's not even American, that's not even of the same language and culture that I speak. But it's it's just at the same time that like what what instead they do instead of of those messages of what I 
thought they were going to do, which again, I know is personally me. I set my own expectations. I shouldn't be mad at the show for what it ended up being. But I just really feel, again, like the the word of the day is frustrating because it's there. It's set up. They touch on those things. They knew what they were doing. Hell, they, they have whole freaking scenes of, of queer issues. I just don't understand why the whole show didn't wasn't on board with that. And then instead you just get this this tension of what was set up and what was delivered. And just to me, the, 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 I, it, it throws in that the subject matter is about like, you know, this exploration of like the diversity of sex and sexuality and that the message that the show goes with is such a narrow message, such a, and, and I don't want to use this in like a weird, like loaded way, but it's such a political message. I know all things are political, but I feel like this was, it almost steers into propaganda. Like it, this, you, you set me up with this show that I thought I was getting like all the great trigger, like tidbits there. Like, come on, the, the, the their last show had straight up like girlfriend witches and the show before that had very toxic girlfriends. So I was expecting, you know, some girlfriends. And instead, it was it was a show about how we need to be making more babies, and I don't know. I don't think I could recommend this. I unless you you are a fan of mecha animes, and like you said, or you're a, a big fan of you know the romantic drama show. If you're a fan of like the genres that Darling pulls from, I'd recommend watching it, watching this as you know as an instructive view to be like, Oh wow. You can take really good parts and still end up with like a mess at the end. Like even if all the parts, all the points fit, um, I feel probably like, yeah, if you're a fan of mech anime, cause again, you can look at this show and see where they could have gone with, you know, the ideas that mecha anime represent that what, what more than just, you know, boy pilots robot to fight aliens, but like, no, no, no. But what does the boy in the robot mean? Like what, is that meant to show instead like to see darling and the franks have such a good setup to like its robots to not deliver fully in my opinion on those i don't know it, it makes it to where i could only recommend if you're a fan of the genres and you're looking to see you know like what happened here <laughs> like as a case study as opposed to you know a viewing party but I don't know, man. Like I said, I, I was a bit nervous about talking about the show just because I have feelings about this show. But um, I don't know. I'm also just really glad that we got that all out, that we're kind of done here and we never have to talk about the the sexy the sexy sex robots for at least another while, at least until Darling 2 comes <laughs> out or is announced. Yeah, I, I, I don't I don't think that's I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah, so it's, yeah, so it's like, yeah, for, for Franks, it exists, and you tr 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 Trigger probably sees that as a thing of like, yeah, it happened, probably just gonna move on, and in a lot of ways, they did kind of move on to bigger and better thing, and yeah, and in in their eyes, in their <laughs> eyes, and a lot of other eyes, better things of being like, how about we try? How about we try again with this mecha, with with this mecha stuff, with, with something we, with something we like are very, very passionate about, which which will which we'll be getting into next episode when we dive right into the very, very juicy details that is, S S S S period, Gridman.